She now has uh, moderator capabilities in this conversation. I've heard her and uh, Michelle and uh, Oki One taking care of business. Yeah, everybody's do, been doing a fine job. Um, Barbie's, you know, they all have, but uh, Barbie's definitely uh, stood out above and beyond doing what she's been doing. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't know her well enough, you know, to say that I've known her for a while, but she's definitely been an integral part of this conversation um, while and when I'm not here. So um more than happy to, to let her run with the reins and uh, keep doing as she's been doing. And uh, except for me, I guess I have trust issues, but <laughs> but I was, you know, I, let's, let's see how it runs. I think she'll do a good job. Hey, Mark, All look right. at this. I could, You didn't even have to say anything. I heard this. Oh, there's another one. Hey, guess what? I'm back. All right. Hey, you, get that ping, you get that ping when uh, when someone comes into the call. Right. Like, that that could be good on a on a on a smaller basis, but imagine three hundred people trying to to chime in. And you're gonna hear ping, exactly, ping, 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 exactly, ping. exactly why I shut it off in the first place, dude. So yeah. um, as of right now, I, mean, I, I I think maybe that's a good thing uh, for a moderator or administrator to have uh, turned down low in the background, but maybe not so much for the general populace. <laughs> Unfortunately, that capability doesn't exist on this software. Either it, it dings when you come in or it doesn't ding when someone comes in. And uh, there was a complaint slash request. We're going to try it for a little while. As of right now, though, Barbie, if you feel that gets just to be a pain in the ass, <laughs> it's really, just like you said, needed for smaller conversations. We're less than 10 right now. So that way, if, if myself or Barbie aren't here to see who's in the room, other people will have the capability to say, oh, hey, I heard somebody just trying to, she'll be yeah. able to shut that off. Once it gets to like maybe 20 or 30 people or more again, um, when that time comes, then we can just shut off those phones. Oh, right. Or, or you know, I mean, maybe leave it to the, uh, the, the moderator to have that control at any time given, you know? Yes, both it, myself it. and Barbie have that capability. So if it gets awesome. out of line, she can, both of us right. can shut that off. You know, I just want I was just thinking uh um uh about you know like posting information uh the uh I noticed that I went back over my Facebook page uh and I I just want to I just have some concerns about this uh, BLM people uh and where they're coming from and 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 how they are coming across to you guys there at the Bundy Ranch and how they are are if they are attacking or coming off or trying to seem to pull up uh, uh, deplorable acts elsewhere. Is that a true scenario, or is that just a rumor being passed around? Uh, again, I'm not there. We've had boots on the ground, you know, that have chimed in. There was one gentleman in particular. I, was, I think that might have been Murdoch, if I'm not mistaken. But if it was, I think he was the one that was going around the local hotels where they were known to have been staying, and coincidentally came across supposedly one of the BLM members. I have no reason not to trust Murdoch. He seems like a stand-up guy, but uh, I'm pretty sure it was him. I could be wrong. Correct me if I am. Well, Barbie, but, um, Brian, was it? We, yeah. we also had another regular uh, volunteer to call the local hotel and try and book 10 rooms. And one hotel was totally filled, but it was only going to be filled for one night. She said, well, we'll have available rooms tomorrow. And he said, oh, well, I needed them tonight. Sorry. And he hung up and then called the next hotel. And they had rooms available, but they did not have 10. Right. What's me and, here, here, man? We come up with all kinds of ways to take care of stuff. Yeah, for sure. And he basically did state that if it was Murdoch that I'm thinking of, that stated that he basically got a hold of a BLM agent that was off. And, he, you know, he said, well, basically, what do you think of the situation? And, you know, they thought that they were pawns, just like uh, we stated earlier. And the guy was a bit shooken up, for sure, based on what just happened. I think it was the evening after the standoff, so, you know, soon after that issue. Well, well, I, I, that was Rob. I, I don't know Rob. what the gentleman's name was that was uh, representing the, the, the BLM there at that cattle gate under the overpass. But he had a uh, a, a goatee. Uh, he was the one that came forward, looking uh, looking uh, uh, over his shoulder, and then he came straight up to the opening and was trying to negotiate. 
And uh, by his body language, uh, he had an enlightenment moment right at that time when he, he realized his life was in danger and he's being played. Uh, that's one thing I kind of I, I kind of uh, I'm gifted with is body, uh, understanding oh, yeah. body language. Sure. And, um, he had scared shitless all over his face oh, yeah. and, and his body language. I mean, so from head to toe, he was scared. I would have to agree with that. Actually, there's one gentleman that I'm trying to catch his name. I've seen him before. He, he's got his own blog talk thing and turned into a series. There was the guy that went before everybody else, the one guy that went. He had black hair. He looked maybe Italian, possibly uh, possibly Indian. But he went literally uh, running off right after they did their prayer and ran off towards the BLM. And he was the one that they were yelling at to stop what he was doing. He's like, look, dude, I'm unarmed. I just want to talk to you guys. I'm it's sure we can work this out. Who was that guy? Dennis Michael Lynch. I would love to talk to that guy because he was, I mean, I, I can't even explain the, the feeling I was having as he was going up there. At first it was, what the hell is the matter with you? What are you doing? That, that wasn't the plan. But at the same time, like just the human side of him, the humanitarian in him just stepped forward and he presented his own life like, hey, I will do whatever it takes to make sure this does not turn into a situation. Well, you know, I think that probably, uh, that was the enlightening moment right then and there for the, those guys that were there on the ground, whether you want to call them the BLM or not. Uh, those guys realized that they were just puppets, uh, being played and were put in a situation where they could, their lives were going to end, could possibly end right then and there if they didn't take, uh, take the actions that they, they only had one way out and that was the way they took. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I like sorry. what says, I'm a New Yorker. <laughs> there he is, Dennis Michael Lance. Got it. Appreciate that. Uh, no, uh, going back to some, some probably some older, older when the thing first started on the internet and the uh, that first video came out with the confrontation of the the convoy coming out of the uh, off the dirt road there and with the uh, uh, I, I'm guessing that was uh, a Bundy, uh, the lady there that got uh, tackled to the ground. Slammed to the ground by the the uh, the ranger or BLM agent, whoever that agent was. Yeah, that was Margaret. Yeah. She is Clive's sister. Okay, that yeah, I I, I kind of figured, I, I was remembering that that was probably the, one of the bunnies. Okay, that was his sister then. Okay, was there any, has there been any official charges filed against that officer for for any for any uh, anything, or has it been investigated? Because I knew they said they were going to investigate it, but I didn't hear any more of what came out of that. Um, the sheriff's office has not filed any charges that we know of yet. And it's all been internally taken like it's normal with any kind of a police brutality then, right? Um, it should have been taken as an assault because he literally snuck up behind her and threw her to the ground. So it should have been written up as an assault. Yeah, um, so that's, that, that, that's the way it should be, and that's the way it should be investigated. But once, see, that's the way they do it. They they, they, they let time go by, and then they, they slip it underneath the, uh, something else, and it fades, and then they come out six months later with an official answer that, oh, we investigated this internally, and blah, 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 you know? Yeah. So nothing, nothing that they protect their own, you know? Mr. Mark, um, yeah. could you bear with us for just one minute? I really need to talk with Brian and play with a couple of these things so that I don't throw everybody out of the call? Sure. <laughs> I just want to make sure we can do this before Brian leaves. He ha Wow. Careful with that one. Well, I wanted to see how... Okay, don't do that anymore. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, you basically click that, and uh, it'll go right into an AMO. People press star six, and then you'll be able to actually... Uh, while we're in here, let's go ahead and just do the experiment. Mark, are you aware on how to uh, appropriately conduct a Q&A? Um, I, I understand that the, the star six mutes me and unmutes me. Uh, the star six, actually, when it goes into... All right, right now we're out of Q&A. So right now, star six would mute you inside the call, or you could just mute your own phone uh, the normal way you mute your phone through your phone interface. But when we go to Q&A, star six actually does something else. It puts you in a oh. queue in a line to be one of the speakers in line to be unmuted to speak with everybody else. We can actually unmute up to one, two, three, four, five people um, besides the host. So we're going to go ahead and do a trial on that. Mark, I'm going to go into Q&A mode. Hey, uh, Barbie, don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> no touchy-touchy right now. Hang on. All right. Now go ahead and uh, anybody who's paying attention right now, just go ahead and press star six, and we're going to walk Barbie through this all together. So you can press star six now, and it'll put you in the Q&A session. There you go, brother. So, Barbie, you see that little question mark right there? Hold on a second. I just... You can't talk right now. You're under the anonymous. Barbie, go ahead and start to yourself. All right. Barbie, is that you? That's me. <laughs> All right. 
All right. So as you see on the left side, you're 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 uncued. Mm-hmm. Okay. On the right side, you see that question mark? Yeah. And then you see above that. Can you see my cursor? Sometimes. <laughs> All right. Basically, Mark, I'm going to put you in the Q&A mode by pressing the question mark. Boom. Now he's engaged in the conversation. He will forever stay in this conversation as long as he's in this mode. Okay. okay. If anybody else, if anybody else could go ahead just for poops and giggles, press star six for me. Whether or not you want to speak, there's only ten people in this call. But somebody, please, just not you, Barbie, but anybody else, please press star six if you can. And that'll get somebody else underneath Mark where you see his name flashing down here. Oh come on, guys, help me out. Yeah. I'm here. Another just, one. Just to make. I'm. I'm here just to make to confirm that that, that mode is working for me. Did it, what did it say engaged on your end, Mark? Yes, it did. It said uh, it, it prompted me to uh, uh, say that I was in uh, line to ask a question, and then it prompted me to press one if I wanted to ask a question. And then I appropriately pressed the one. Cool. So that's what they're hearing on their end. I, I unfortunately come through the different moderator phone line, so my experience is a little different when it comes to that. But so yeah, you heard it. That's what Mark hears. Um, Pretty simple. If he got out of pocket, you can mute him. That's me muting him right now and unmuting him again. No, no, I'm unmuted. And then I hear a, yeah. I hear a, uh, a computerized voice saying I'm muted and or unmuted. All right. And then um, let's say uh, let's say he was in the queue. You can see anonymous on the uh, on the inside on the left side, right, mm-hmm. Barbie? Uh, yeah. That's you. okay. That's you. As you can see the uh, the graphic equalizer. Yep. On occasion, on occasion, I try to keep it in the yellow. On occasion, you'll see me hit red or pink. Okay. Um, Mark's voice is very booming, but he's keeping it at a good volume, so he hasn't redlined too much. But it, you'll see it. If somebody's redlining, you got to kind of warn them and ask them to tone it down. This would be redlining if you actually can see the bars just increasing highly and it comes in on that and it's just through it. Oh my God. Reverb. Yeah. And then Mark, Mark, you actually probably could pull off that anonymous voice they use online without actually any effects at all. That's an awesome voice. But this is my, this is my real voice, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's my You're real wa- voice. I, I, when I was 12 years old, I caught a line drive in, uh, in uh, Little League Baseball yeah, right in the throat, man. And I've been cursed with this voice ever since. <laughs> No, it's an awesome voice. It booms. It's good. It's cool. You should sing heavy metal or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, 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 I can't carry a tune to this. I was at a, I was at a, uh, a rally in, in, uh, in, in Washington, D.C. this past year, and I had an opportunity to, uh, it, it was in a church, and this church was a, a refuge for, uh, uh, the uh, civil rights movement people to, uh, to congregate in, uh, an overnight in, and, uh, it has a dome area. And I stood in the middle of this domed area and gave a pretty off the cuff, awesome speech. And uh, yeah, people were kind of flabbergasted at my voice and, and wondered if I had a, uh, a microphone or a distortion thing in my in my uh, in my hand or something. And it kind of blew them away to find out that it was just my natural voice. No, it's awesome. Yeah, you've just uh, some density and depth is cool, man. Um, so yeah, you know, moving forward, Barb, this is pretty much the uh, gist of it. Uh, I am no professional at this. I've been doing it for a week and a half for such. And as you know, uh, when we mastered the Q&A recently, it's not always easy, especially when that queue is full. If there's more than six or seven or more people in the queue, it gets a little cluster epic. But uh, good luck with that. Uh, what you would want to do is if it gets a little blocked up on the left side, you actually have to go back to the right side and you would have to disengage that person by pressing. Do you see the little person with the bubble over their head? Yep. That represents Mark. So you would actually click that again. Mark, I'm not. Hey, actually, Mark, as an experiment, I'm going to hit this. I'm actually curious if it hangs up on the people or keeps you in the call. So if you get hung up on it, I apologize. Call right back. And I actually still see you in the call. I'm going to still unmute you, bro. Yeah, all, all I right. did was mute me. All right, cool. So, so that took you out of the Q&A mode and then moved you back up into where I can see everybody else in the room. Did you see how that kind of worked, Barb? Yep. All right, cool. So, yeah, it's kind of self-explanatory. Everybody on the left side's uh in the call unmuted. That fills up eventually. Hey, uh, actually, uh, six, how do I kick people out? How do you kick people out? Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. Well, there's a couple of ways that I, I've done about it. I try to be real civil with people. <laughs> my, uh, my patience level has not been reached yet. So, uh, on the uh, left side where you see the graphs as far as the equalizer, um, you'll see a mute option there. Mm-hmm. You just, if you see, it's real hard to catch when there's a lot of people unmuted, but it, especially when you're out of Q&A mode. But when you're in Q&A mode, it's easier to control how many people are there unmuted. But uh, when you see that bar graph going on, like if you hear a dog barking and you hear that graph and you see that graph go up, then you know it's that number creating that static. Or uh, you know if there's a, a lot of like wind. 
you'll see that that bar rises up. So you just want to go ahead and meet up the highest one. If you realize that you just cut somebody off, you can unmute them real quick. It does get a little confusing when there's many people talking at once. All those graphics or equalizers are going up at the same time. So it gets a little tricky there, but I think you'll master it. If you can keep it limited to five, five people, you'll be able to keep an eye on uh, where that's coming so, from. Two o'clock in morning, we get about 10 to 15 people. <laughs> Tom, Tom one just chimed in. He's actually got the other aspect, which is the uh, moderation and capability via the, the telephone, which he can set it to record. He can kill the conversation, things of that nature. If he had to, he knows better. But he's been using it to be able to just jam right through as a moderator on the phone. What's going up, Tom's one man? How you been, bro? I'm going to go ahead and safely say that there's a possibility that Tom one is still having freaking phone issues, man. Dude, I've got like a couple... No, these aren't any good either. You'll end up throwing them against the wall. I'm just thinking of how to get you even a hot phone, something, man. I, I, I'd send you a gift certificate for Walmart if you needed something like that. Go grab a hot phone, man. If that helps you. You've been having phone issues like nobody's business lately. And I, you know, uh, here's an idea I want to run past you. Barb, Thomas, while you're listening, you know, uh, a couple of new fans just chimed in. I want to start a crowdfund, but I, I'm trying to like do this the right way. I, I want to be, I want to be, uh, you know, as transparent as possible with what I want to do with the funds, but at the same time, I'm just not a guy to really even ask for money, but if I were to go to the next level with this, which obviously we're trying to do, I want to kind of be able to have the capability to where it's our website, our network, you know, our blog talk, our broadcast, which would be a rebroadcast of the conversation as it's happening, so therefore we protect ourselves from something. But um, I really want to do that, but I don't, I'm not really at a pace where I can say, hey, this is how much we need right now, you know, if, if, if I could send him a phone right now, I would, if I could make sure Murdoch got what he needs, and maybe had a Hero 3 with him, so he could give us actual updates with some footage at a site that had video and this capability, or we could watch all those things together, that'd be great, but again, I don't want to give it over to just Blog Talk Radio, or give it over to uh, any other network, so to speak, that, you know, a couple people have chimed in, hey, you can use mine, well, hey, thank you for rebroadcasting, maybe we can work something out there, but to give someone like full auditorial administrative censorship type control over this is just, I think we've all agreed on that. Probably not a good idea. I don't want to go to that level of syndication unless I know that we have that type of volume, demand, etc. We've created some of that, yes, but we need to be able to document that, you know, somewhere to be able to move further. I have some records here <clears throat> that Bob can now see as well as far as, you know, the recordings and the conversations that uh, we've, we've done thus far. It's a lot of hours worth of uh, audio data we have to read right now, but I don't know, it, it's coming to a point where there's the people that could use some assistance, not namely me, as well I'd like to you know, work towards putting that fund together for actual people that have dealt with us directly, we can send the appropriate things to directly as well, like we're doing, uh, like you're doing with Walmart, um, but I don't know, it just, I kind of want to get into that and move forward with it, it's just a matter of what do, what's the right thing to do, what's the right way to go about it, you know, don't have legal advice, I like how you guys. <laughs> well, what do we want to turn this into? What do we want to build it? We're trying to, you know, find some ideas out there. Can I but, you know, offer my opinion? Please. Well, one of the things that we were talking about the other morning, it came up, and there was like 10 people in here. And because we're here for the Patriots, we're here for the American people, we were talking about the possibility of having a challenge that the callers can try and get their sheriffs to call in. And then we just asked them, you know, where do you stand, OC4 orders? And talk to them and see where they stand on the whole Bundy situation or American Op Operation American Spring since that's coming up. Um, not only then it carried on a little bit further from sheriff's officers to also maybe some representatives or um, I always forget the other one's name, senators. And, you know, just, just be able to get what their opinion is because if they're of the opinion that, oh, no, the, the Bundys were wrong and I'd never deputize anyone, and I'm going to follow the orders given to me, we need to get that person out of office. And while I'm in Arkansas and you're in Illinois, okay, if you're not on and I'm interviewing, you can listen to the recording later, and you can spread the word to all your friends up in Illinois. And it's just a thought because there's that many people from that many states calling in. We have had every state except Hawaii check in. Yeah, I think the, uh, the Oath Keepers, uh, you're going to find the Oath Keepers and the, and, the, and the Sheriff's Departments that are involved in that are going to be... Uh, leaning towards the Bundy side of the issues and if not totally in the Bundy side of the issues and the ones that are uh, younger guys that don't, they're just getting their feet wet in the, in the law enforcement, uh, you know, career and fresh out of school or, or the military. Uh, 
are going to be, uh, don't know what side to take. So they're going to go where they think they're more secure. They're not wanting to rock a boat. Yeah, but you know, when somebody's talking to you, you can tell if they're hesitant on a question and if they don't want to rock the boat. You can tell by the responses. If you're sitting there typing messages back and forth, you don't feel the emotion, you don't hear the sound. As to where when right. you're sitting there talking, you're humanly in the interacting, you can hear the hesitation in the voice. You can tell when somebody's lying when they're talking. Correct. I can. Um, it, it's just something that we had been talking about that I wanted to run past Brian. Oh no, I think that's an I think that's a, a, a outstanding idea, and and it may it may even open uh, corridors to you know to other uh, lines of people uh, 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 you know to voice their opinion in the uh, in the government uh, side of the issues because. Uh, I think that that's probably what is going to legitimize the Bundy uh, issue in in a whole is the amount of uh, I don't want to say uh, legitimate legitimate people, but I, I I'm going to I want to say the people that are uh, that are employed by the government uh, if they take a stance towards the Bundy side of the issue, that is going to legitimize the the Constitution. Exactly. And that's what and we I think that's where we need to go. Uh, and, and I and going back to my my point with being laser focused, I, I think that that is probably the bottom line, in my opinion, anyway. That needs to be the clearest message. These are fundamental fundamental issues that concern our constitution and the law of the land, not just yeah. Mr. Bundy against the BLM. This is this is U.S. citizenry against a tyranny type regime that's in power and what our our constitution says to do when that happens. And Brian, I do but I think I could do it. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes, do it. There he is, there he is. Tom's one. Speak up, brother. How are you? Well, you sound loud and clear. Tom's one. You just want to check with me. Go ahead off and write about that now. What you've been doing. Well, thanks for chiming in, man. Um, anybody wants to jump in at uh, Q&A, just press star six. Uh, same old bat line, same old bat channel, same old bat code. Um, feel free to pass that around. Um, Tom, did you get a new phone yet, man? I called in like 10 minutes ago, but I've been checking around from my headphones. Gotcha. What, uh, what's it going to take for us to get you a phone that you're happy with, man? I'll be able to get it soon, but I don't know what I'm trying to get yet because uh, the FPC just came out this new regulation that, see where I live, I don't have any signal at all, so i got to be on the Wi-Fi calling list. And my phone company wants to have a 911 address. And I've had incidents where my phone accidentally calls 911 before, and I don't want 30 cops showing up at my house. If it accidentally yeah, that's not good. I think they'll charge you for that. My calling because um, the FCC requires a 911 address for every phone line. Now. Or, yeah, we got to get your phone regardless, dude. Something with unlimited minutes, man. I got yeah. unlimited everything. Hey, you sound good. Whatever volume, whatever you just did, can you say like that? I got the mic right up to my face. I'll just speak into the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do what you just did. That works a lot for us. All right, um, all right, Mark, you're still in there. Barbara, you're still in here. Call here. Yep. All right, yeah, no, we were just kind of conceptualizing on what this is and what it could be and where we want to go with that. Mark, you were about to chime in. Oh, uh, I was just going to say, uh, I had a thought that, uh, Barbie, to like, Barbie had something to say. Sorry? Yeah, Barbie was about to say, like, she had a suggestion as well, but then Tom's one came in. Oh, go ahead, Barbie. Well, that, that was one of the suggestions that came up. Another thing that had come up was, and Mark brought it up also, the fact of the different charges being filed and, um, the, I know I'm going to say the word wrong, the recalling, that's the word, recalling of Harry Reid and the legal issues on what you have to do to get it and what state information is and who has to be the one to file for it. I mean, there is a lot of good information passing through this channel that we need to get to the right person. And I really think that because we have the open talk time when we don't have other things to talk about, we can put this stuff together and make sure it gets to the right person. Well, a lot of different groups have chimed in offering, you know, their services and their people and their audience as well. There's a lot that we can be achieved considering we did get a lot of different people from a lot of different states involved. I'm a third correct. notebook. And I know you've been taking a lot of good notes. My third notebook. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's, what did you just say, man? What's that chime noise in the background? Oh, uh, we turned it on. Somebody had requested, so it makes it easier for him. That was the way he's used to when conference calls. He wanted to uh, be able to hear when someone comes in. So that way, when there's only two people in the room, whether or not it goes dead, they can tell when a third person comes in the room that might be Tom's line that's only hearing a dead call. So they wanted to be able to hear that noise so they could speak up and start up a conversation with them and give them the latest updates instead of just hanging on. Nobody says anything, so a couple people leave because they're not hearing anything. So that way, at least it gives everybody the ability to know when someone else chimed in as well. Yeah, Fair enough. 
doesn't matter to me. I'll go in here. Uh, yeah, it's going to get annoying when I think there's probably 50 plus people around. It's kind of annoying right now, but um, we're going to use that for a little while. If it gets bigger again, any event or this escalates or anything like that, we'll go ahead and shut it off. We have the capability. Both now Barbie and I have that capability. <laughs> cool. Sounds good to me. Go ahead, Barbie. Sorry. Yeah. You, I mean, I, that's a great idea. And luckily, um, where I work, without saying too much, because I got to keep something separate, but I have the capability to call pretty much any patriotic group I want to to see if we can provide a service for them. But along those lines, I also have built a list of all the sheriffs, all the uh, firehouses, and all the police officers, and all the state police uh, in the entire nation. I found a resource for that. And uh, not all of them are 100% on, but I, I don't doubt that if this was to be done correctly and people were t- willing to take some initiative, that we could probably set up some se- some secondary teams of volunteers in each state that might be able to uh, start contacting some sheriffs, start getting these emails, and start putting a little bit of a uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, elbow to the ribs. Say, hey, man, why don't you guys kind of, uh, you know, chime in and get on this call. You know, with Oath Keepers, I actually have the uh, growing list of sheriffs that are on the good list of the Oath Keepers. And uh, as the updated one, I'm looking at total state sheriff's associations that are on board. Based on what these guys are saying, there's 17 states alone that are willing to chime on. California, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Minnesota, Missouri, Montana, Nebraska, New Mexico, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Texas, Utah, and Wyoming. All of those sheriffs have chimed in with those keepers that are on, that are on the good guys list. The entire sheriff's organization. There might be two, three, four, ten guys you know, depending on the size of the state, that might not be 100% down for it. But overall, you know, they put out their public statement that they're 100% backing, taking their oath and standing behind the Oath Keeper's oath. So if I went narrow it down. met with my local sheriff and asked him face-to-face because I wanted to know. Right. He said he's with them. So, yeah, luckily mine's on. Um, mine's on board. I was very surprised to see that in Illinois. He's one of few. But, uh, you know, that being said, now the Illinois Entire Sheriff's Association is on this list. It wasn't on this list, actually, last time I looked at it. Uh four months ago, and uh, I'm really proud to see Illinois on there. I'm quite surprised. But then again, I don't know, you know, I, I've, got, I've got personal trust issues, so <laughs> I don't know if I fully trust that all the sheriffs are 100% on board with not conducting, um, you know, any illegal orders. And, uh, you know, I know the orders that they will not obey are on a list, and, uh, you know, I carry those cards around in my wallet, as a matter of fact, and pass them on to other oath keepers. And uh, I'm just not 100% convinced that some people wouldn't turn tail and run or follow illegal orders if they've got that much federal pressure coming down on them to do something. You know, it depends, obviously, upon the volatility of the situation. But even then, you know, Boston, when you look on this list, is Boston on that list? No, nah, negative. Well, that's the, so, the, the least thing I want to do is talk to my sheriff, because, I, like I said before, my sheriff's department is in Speak up, bro. Speak up, bro. Like, about, like I said before, my sheriff's department, uh, the sheriff, most of the time, or a lot of the time, doesn't want like to work within the boundaries of the law or the Constitution. Or just uh, make up a lie to get around it uh, a lot of times in my experience. You're right. There's a lot of yes men out there. There's a lot of guys wearing masks. You can't deny that. And it's hard to kind of call them out individually, which I'm decimating this list. You know, here, I'll even read Illinois right now. Why not? Hang on, it's loaded. But, you know, just to be able to see exactly what they're confirming. Taking a second to load. Bear with me. Press release was February 11th, 2013. How come I did not see this before? Illinois Sheriff's Association at their winter training conference adopted the attached resolution which mirrors the NSAR uh, resolution passed at their midwinter conference. 73 sheriffs in attendance. The sheriffs voted unanimously not to support a House Bill 132 that bans certain weapons. Sheriffs from across the state believe it is the responsibility and duty to uphold the Constitution, including the Second Amendment. Rational law-abiding citizens are not the cause of random acts of horrific violence in our communities. The focus should be on the lack of mental health services in our count- in our country. County jails include the detain- uh, continue to detain individuals who have been remanded to the Department of uh, Human and Mental Health Division for treatment. On February 8th, there were 68 of these individuals waiting for placement. Blah, blah, blah. But that doesn't give me orders. Hang on a second. Page two. <laughs> Man, that sounds like the... Uh... Chief of Police in Detroit telling all the citizens in Detroit uh, to start right, buying right. guns because uh, didn't, I'm pretty sure Detroit had some anti-gun laws as well, and uh, like Chicago does now. So and they just started getting bad. I don't know. I'm not gonna say I'm 100 percent on this, but uh, now the cops are just telling the law-abiding people to buy guns because they know that it's not a law-abiding people who are doing the crime, and everybody knows that a criminal doesn't care about a damn gun law. Based on what they had here, uh, 
Uh, I'll give you the summary. It says the elected sheriff is recognized throughout the United States as the chief local law enforcement officer directly accountable to the people through the electoral process. All sheriffs take an oath to enforce and defend and to enforce and defend the United States Constitution and the state constitution and laws. And the primary mission of the sheriff is to ensure the public safety. Um, so a little bit how they stand behind the Second Amendment. They strongly support the citizens' right to, uh, protected right to bear arms under the Second Amendment. And the Illinois Sheriff Association does not support any laws that deprive the citizens of the rights provided under the Constitution and Bill of Rights. So that makes you think, because the gun laws out here are crazy, but, it, you know, if, if you're able to carry them, you've got to have basically now two permits to even conceal carry. And an evaluation of those. And the classes, not to mention, to conceal carry. So, what happens if you're a guy that just said, F you, I'm not getting my Floyd card, I'm not getting CCW, has that broken down in the trunk or whatever, you know, according to the state laws, but still has no license or permit. So is he able to say, well, bring me a sheriff, sheriff's got authority here, sheriff stands by the Second Amendment, and Second Amendment doesn't say anything about Floyd cards or permits or CCW or taking courses, yada, yada, yada. So I don't know, is that, is that a, uh, a definite vilified authoritative position that they could take, depending on the situation, you know, can you actually call one of them in? And if they're truly backing the Second Amendment, do you feel that in Illinois, based on county laws, but what they're saying is they're not going to infringe on people's Second Amendment rights? So which is it? Do you think a county sheriff could pull you out of that situation and say, leave the guy alone? He's got a Second Amendment right. I don't think so. So where does that battle this, begin? It's jurisdiction. What the hell is going on? Yeah, Brian. Go ahead, but Historically, the sheriff has always been the, 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 the highest po- elected power or official in, in the county. And he is up to the sheriff to interpret the, the constitution and the state constitution and the local laws. He usually is, it, 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 and he enforces them, the, the constitution and the, and the state constitution and the local laws as he interprets them. You, are, are you, you, you get what I mean? So it, from, from county to county, each sheriff is, can interpret the law and enforce the law as he interprets it. So one right here, they, right here, the entire state's organization strongly supports the citizens' protected right to bear arms under the Second Amendment, and the Illinois Sheriff's Association does not support any laws that deprive any citizen of the rights provided under the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Yeah, so I, does that mean, based on this statement, that if I'm in that situation, I can call upon a sheriff and point that out, and now I've got proof that they're not going to do that to me. I'd still probably end up in jail. Right, but you know what? You know what? what what's going to protect our individual rights in an individual circumstance? And, and is 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 moving pictures, video, cameras, uh, witness. You know, uh, the camera doesn't blink. You know, uh, I, I I I mean, I besides my firearm, I carry with me everywhere. I carry my uh, uh, my camera is on all the time, or ready to be on in a, in a split second um, to, to to document. Um, so my state laws are completely different on videotaping officers. Yeah, they're they're a public. Well, I, I, you're right. It, it, that is a that's a different rule and, and regulation from from state to state. But in in, in Missouri, uh, it, it, we don't have a, a hindrance. They're a public. They're a public. A uh, in a public area. They're a, uh, uh, conducting public uh, as, as a public servant. They are. We have the right to document their actions. Hey, that, hey, man, that's in every um, that's in every state. You have the right to document the police, no matter what they say. Um, but uh, well, that that that's not necessarily true. Uh, New Jersey and Pennsylvania have what's called wire taps. You can photograph them or video them as long as you're not have audio attached to it. Then yeah, once you audio yeah, so record and and. I had a that friend of mine as a truck driver got busted, busted that way at a, at a way station and he was audio and video recording the incident and, uh, they pressed charges against him on wiretap and, uh, he lost his yeah, truck in the deal. Hey, do you know if that has gone to the Supreme Court yet? Because I guarantee you, if I ever went, I wouldn't go through New Jersey anyway because, uh, I just don't want, even want to end up in that state, even for travel. But, um, yeah, if I got caught up in that, I would definitely be appealing that until it got to the Supreme Court because everybody knows recording a cop is not wiretapping. And uh, those people in New Jersey need to get those people out of office who even made that a law because I thought wiretapping was uh, tapped into someone's phone, not recorded. But the Supreme Court has ruled, which uh, the Supreme Court trumps out all other state laws that it is perfectly legal to record police. So uh, I'm pretty sure someone would mention that and uh, change his demeanor. But... Uh, what county are you in, Missouri? I'm in uh, I'm in St. Louis County. Oh yeah, I'm uh, I'm over here in Jackson, I'm back in Kansas City. Okay, you're on the other side. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, I, I believe Missouri has. We have the right to to uh, to uh, uh, to uh, document public officials, whether they're sewer workers or or what, what have you, you know, firemen, you know. Uh, but I believe that our yeah, that. If you ask me, if you ask me, that's in any state, but um, yeah. But I don't know if, if each individual state has those, that same law or uh, uh, you know, um, interpretation of the law. Uh, you know, I think that I I don't know, but my buddy noticed been some years ago that 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 took place that he got the wire the wire fraud or wiretap uh, charge set against him. Uh, so I don't know if the rules have changed or the, if you're talking that Supreme Court ruling came down after the fact or not. But yeah, this has been about eight years ago. I mean, it's mainly just uh, people having to stand up for themselves in court and not just uh, plead guilty to the charges immediately. That's just like the guy who beat a red light uh, to beat a speeding camera charge because of the Sixth Amendment right to face his accuser, and they couldn't prove he was driving the car. And since he has a Fifth Amendment right, he doesn't have to say a word about who could have been driving at all, plus he doesn't get solved to pay a crime, or doesn't get paid to solve crimes in the first place. And uh, six months later, they sent him a letter saying the charges were dropped. So I'm pretty sure if someone actually fought hard enough, that why it's happening, Ma, um, which me and you both know is a lot of BS. Because uh, wiretapping pertains to phones, not public officials, and uh, that means all the police with dash cams in their cars need wiretapping charges as well. Because that, why are they recording a private citizen? Also, all the cameras on the street, also everyone who puts up a camera in their store uh, should be charged with wiretapping because most of those are audio and video, or a large percentage of them are anyway. Yeah, that, that just goes to my point. Why I I I I highly recommend everyone carry a a, a, a phone or camera that's capable of both audio and and, and video. Um, you know, just for self protection. If you don't want to carry a gun, I mean, you know, I, sometimes you can't use a gun. A, a camera and a, is is a better is a better weapon. And, and um, you know, it, it, the camera doesn't blink, and especially if it's in your favor, and you can use it as a as a evidence. For your uh, to put your uh, to uh, you know to to bring before a judge uh, you know all the better. It, it, hey, it um, you. how are the uh, gun laws out in St. Louis? I'm sorry, I could I could, I could really hear you. Uh, what are the gun laws out there in St. Louis? Uh, we uh, we're uh, pretty much the same as the state. Uh, uh, the city uh, has a little bit stricter laws. I, I don't go particular. I, I'm not really uh, go to the city that much. I, I live in the western county of St. Louis County. Uh, we uh, the only thing we can't go into is like a bar. We can't go into uh, a, a court a courthouse or, or a government building uh, or a post office that type of thing with a firearm. And we can open carry and conceal carry as long as we have a permit. Uh, you can carry a rifle. Uh, 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 without a permit, you know, open open carry a rifle around with you without a permit. But when you go to buy a firearm, you have uh, to um, uh, fill out an application, uh, show identification, and then the dealer, the authorized arms dealer store, calls into a database and uh, does your check. Uh, you know, I guess they do a, a state, local, and federal check on you there through their database. And I've bought multiple weapons recently and it's taken no more than five minutes to get cleared so you know it's yeah. not a long process it doesn't take there's no waiting periods or 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 additional fees for that uh yeah, to get a concealed huge. carry from, i'm sorry i said yeah that's all here as well uh i'm pretty sure the state has a law that says that you can't uh, impose a bunch of restrictions locally on them for draconian and all that yeah right yeah, I definitely would not want to go anywhere in Kansas City unless I was on or San, especially St. Louis because St. Louis is more crime than Kansas City does. Um, so that would definitely be an issue. I don't even like going up there anyway because I've known people who've had uh, some incidents up there. Well, that's right. When, when, in, in another problem I've, I've seen, I've not personally experienced it myself, uh, but all these different little t- cities within, you know, the county, like we, we uh, I know Kansas City has the same the same thing. You got Grandview, you got Northern Kansas City, you got uh, uh, you know uh, uh, all these little suburbs around the the city that have their own ordinances. Now there's a big difference between an ordinance and a rule and a law. Uh, an ordinance is a local thing that's within its own little municipality that's enforced by their municipal police and 
really, it, you know, they can really mess you up on those local local ordinances when when you're when you're carrying. Uh, you know, so you really have to pay attention uh, to you know how you act or how, how you conceal. In in I mean, just you know, from going from one municipality to another municipality, the the rules are completely different. Uh, but I think if you were to present your case in a in a in, a, in, in front of a judge in a wider view of the law, you would probably have a you know they would be dismissed on uh, on you know on cause. Yeah, but, I, you know the, 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 uh, that's that's how that's how the government keeps control is by just writing more rules and legislation and and you know that that's how the federal government has gotten to the size it is now and, and it lies the problem. Know. I just hope that uh, our state passes that bill. I know you probably heard about it that it's supposed to nullify the federal gun laws that they deem unconstitutional. At first, it was the bill said that it was a fine of up to a year in prison and a thousand dollar fine for any federal agent enforcing unconstitutional gun laws in Missouri. And then they took it, but it also said that if you had a gun that was stolen from you, you had to report it in like 48 hours. So, or you, or it was a crime. But they took both of those out. And um, one of the Senate here, he wants to know what the state attorney general has to say about it as well. But that's yeah, that's, that's that's our that's our illustrious leader, Claire Mc, Claire McCaskill. She needs to be booted. I don't know why she's been in 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 there for so long. Yeah, um, it's it's the it's the side it's the side of the state that she's got her power base from, man. And, and uh, I'm doing everything I can to to pass the word about her uh, to get her out of this election. Um, she barely got elected in this last time, and, and and hopefully she won't make it. We got her on the road. You know, I think. Was that? You know, Danny Hoskins. Yeah, I was talking yeah. to him uh, a while back, trying to ask him questions uh, since he was in my city and. And uh met him through my workplace. But um yeah, he's a bad real sketchy guy too. You don't want to answer any questions. Um he's Hey uh one two two zero just called in. I just wanted to announce that you you're unmuted, young lady. Hey there, how are you? Hey, how are you? You sound tired. I am tired. Oh my gosh. I've had a few articles today that I have to uh, never mind. Long story. Hey, you guys were talking about um security police officers and, and what have you are on duty and cameras and communications um, and public establishments. Right. Okay. Um, the um, U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit held in August 7, 2011, that the citizens have the First Amendment rights to record the police without the knowledge or consent, and never mind that there is there is a no expectation of privacy as is required by the definition of oral communication referred to <clears throat> a wiretap uh, a uh, wiretap statute. All right. Uh, private private places, private businesses, as long as they're saying that universal surveillance uh, and or uh, uh, video or audio, they're okay with that. Just so you guys know. Awesome. A lot of the police officers and even uh, law enforcement agents out there are still um, going by old law or still law where some parties are two-party consent recording states and some states are just one-party consent. Well, that does not apply if a crime is being committed. Well, no matter what state I'm in personally, I'm according any encounter I have with the police, no matter what kind of BS law they want to try and throw out. And people just got to stand up for their rights no matter what these uh, laws that get passed, just like NDAA got passed. So that means there's no more due process. It's only a matter of time before that starts to take effect um, in full force. So that's another topic. Uh, I would record them no matter what state I was in or what local laws I have on my tapping because um, I'm pretty sure I would win the case, to tell you the truth. All right, a very dear friend of my family is charged in Palm Beach County with illegal interception, interception of communication. That's what he was charged with, because he was recording um, the cops giving him a ticket. The deputy yeah, giving him a ticket. It was dismissed from court. Yep, and that's a false charge. I would go to court in a heartbeat over there. And oh, yeah, it was dismissed. It was, it, it, they laughed out of court. You have to understand that the, 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 the government, the police, uh, or any agency of the, of the government can charge you with anything. And, and you can, and you have the choice to accept the charges and plead guilty to them or appear in court and plead not guilty and have the state or government prove your guilt. Yeah, and, and it's up to the, it's the, the burden, it is the burden of the state, the government, to prove you, you are guilty. That not to, to prove, you, to prove your innocence. And, and these are the rights that we have to keep and, and fight for. Because if they get their way, it, it will be, it will be the opposite. Just like the tax, uh, the IRS, is right now they when you are charged with a tax code violation you are guilty until proven innocent you mean you have to prove you're innocent you're already assumed guilty 
Uh, that, that, yeah, that guilty is, until proven guilty. It's actually right. Like guilty until proven guilty. Uh, right. And it's just like, I mean, it all ties back. Like, if they said all, all semi-autos are illegal tomorrow, how many people are going to turn them in? How many people are going to say, you can come and take it? Because I ain't turning nothing in. It's the same thing with recording the police. Uh, they can make it illegal all they want to. That it, it's not stopping me from do it, exercising my rights. I mean, it's the same thing that Hitler did. Um, he was just taking away people's rights through passing laws as well. I'll add in that he was democratically elected as well. Well, yeah, you're right there. And and and, and just to bring those things fast forwarded to to the to where we're at at the Bundy Ranch, these, these guys, these BLM guys, are the same the same actors and uh, clowns that were that were called brown shirts back in Hitler's day and in Nazi day. These are the same useful idiots that got killed on the, the on on the the, the the night of the long knife. Uh they used these people uh to, to forward their agenda and to grab power and, and land and, and resources and money until they're no longer useful and then they go on to the next stage. And and that's where we're at right now is these government agencies uh or contractors or, or whatever these people are that are out there in Nevada right now they're being used as puppets and, and under the guise of laws and the heroes of the land management and rangers and, 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 and uh, so-called authority that really don't have any authority in, uh, are, are, are pushing and probing to see what they can get away with. And, and fortunately, uh, 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 Clive Bundy and the militia uh, uh, dug their heels into the ground and realized what was going on, uh, and it's taken hold. And um, I, I just I, I pray that that it really takes hold, and not just for now, and not just in six months from now, but in six years from now. It, I work to the point where I don't have to explain to my granddaughter what freedom was. Um, you know, uh, we have to we have to keep our freedoms, and we have to fight for them. You're exactly right. Another thing about the Bundy Ranch, or what you said about the contractors. Um, contractors is just a fancy word for mercenaries. Is all it is. Because that's it. Uh, that's all. That's all a mercenary is. is a contractor. They, they, that's what. That's the definition of a mercenary. They're contracting I mean, to do a job for a uh, for, for for bounty and exactly. whatever they're even, Well, even um, Edward Snowden in in, in the NSA. Ninety nine percent of the NSA is contractors. And so I mean, that's just basically mercenaries who are doing uh, work as spying on the American people. Uh, if you got private corporations or companies doing the government's work, that's how you know you're in down. That's how you know things are starting to get low, because uh, most of the work done by the government today is through mercenaries, aka contractors. Exactly, and 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 when they use the word contract, contract, uh, they're not by law a federal uh, person. They're not federally employed. They are a private person, and that aren't that that isn't bound by federal guidelines that that agency uh, an, an agent of that agency would be bound by that is correct they're, 10, they're considered 1099 independent contractors you're correct about that right exactly so they're not bound by the same regulations or or, or uh, stipulations that a agent or, or an employee of that agency would be bound by they have a law that. Well, nowadays, um, where they can just, on suspicion, no proof or reasonable, not even reasonable suspicion, or it can just be an assumption, or if you just say one word, uh, if, uh, if somebody says one word, whoever the president does to be able to make that decision, um, can take you anywhere they want in the world. It doesn't matter who it is. It could be a mercenary, aka contractor, um, it could be an agent or whatever, to send you to prison for a life anywhere in the world it went to be at Guantanamo Bay or some prison over in Africa um, for no reason. So guilty until you're permanently guilty without um, ever seeing anybody ever again with no due process and no lawyer. Well, this, this, this rule, this federal, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, excuse me, I'm, my brain is, is not coming up with names. Uh, the senator from South Carolina, Lindsey Graham and... Uh, I can't think of the other the other one was it Schumer that wanted to they wanted to put a law through and declare all of the all states inside the United all all 48 states uh, a battleground that anybody can be accused of being a terrorist and once they accuse you of an act of terrorism they you for they can arrest you detain you for whatever and for however long they want to with no due process. Oh yeah, uh, no, that's national. It's called the NDAA, specifically Section uh, 1021, 
So, and no, it doesn't even have to be accusing you of anything. All it has to be is, it even says in there, it says, if you're suspected of having any sort of ties to terrorists. So, and it uses very vague language. So, what could be a terrorist or a threat to the state? If you agreed with a politician six years ago that the NSA's kept the files on, uh, does that make you a terrorist? If some uh, another supporter of that politician went out and did a bombing, or what about it? Sa- and also says in there, if you if you commit a quote belligerent act, now whatever the president or whoever he designates to make this decision of what belligerent means uh, can lock you up. So if you're yelling in the middle of the street, that gives them. That, I think me and you both agree, and everybody here would agree that that's pretty belligerent for no reason at 3 a.m. in the morning yelling in the street. Uh, so if, you, if that's belligerent, so that means you go to prison for life without ever having a lawyer, ever going on trial or anything. And right, not, and, and, you and it's just circumvented the Constitution. Exactly. Uh, that's not even the first unconstitutional law. I mean, it, with the First Amendment being violated on multiple levels, as demonstrated at the Bunny Ranch, you can't even protest within damn near a mile of anyone who's protected by the Secret Service. Um, there's several people who got arrested in my town whenever the president came and did a speech for the college and, because they were within a mile, which is a violation of the Second Amendment. We don't have to go over that again. Third Amendment quartering troops in houses as they have um, militarized police, VHS people taking up tactical positions in people's homes without permission. Um, same thing like during the Boston bombing, doing warrantless searches, searches and seizures. Everybody knows the Fourth Amendment's been getting violated for decades. Um, Fifth Amendment, the bill uh, that's been violated because how many people are always pleading guilty to crimes they didn't commit because of the uh, police interrogations? That's pretty sketchy. Uh, six with all the cameras around everywhere at the stoplight. Um, also, speedy and public trial. Some people are waiting on trial, waiting for trial in jail for one to five years, sometimes ten years. Um, I can keep going on and on. Right, and that, and, that, and, then, and that goes back to what I was saying earlier about they, the powers that be that are, are pulling the strings. Uh, they've been doing this for the last hundred years. It, it's just not. It's just not recent. It, it, it's they're just doing it more uh, overtly now. Uh, they're they're coming out and and, and they're probing and see what they're doing it more uh, uh, robustly and and seeing how 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 far that how far they can uh, push issues and and take things and uh and cover them up i i haven't seen anything uh on on national news or in the newspapers or even on on the national radio talk shows about about this uh the only people that are 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 keeping this uh the bundy uh ranch going is facebook and uh uh, uh the internet media and now they're talking about shutting down the, the internet the internet uh they're having a, a meeting in Brazil right now. I can't recall the uh, the uh, under what banner they're having it, but there uh, there's co- uh, countries that are wanting to uh, uh, totally put up a firewall against the the uh, you know censor the internet. Um, oh yeah, it's it, no that just that's the UN deal. Um, just like the U.S. said they relinquish control. If the UN enacts something across that all nations have to sign, then they can just bypass the Constitution. Which I mean, it really wouldn't matter if the UN was or not. Uh, since they bypassed it so many times before, no one seems to care, other than just a small minority of the people in the country, which are now being called domestic terrorists, and have been for years. This isn't just the first incident with Harry Reid. Um, exactly. Uh, with DHS targeting uh, libertarians or gun owners for uh, potential targets. And, uh, Excuse me, uh, Go ahead, Brian. Right. Brian? Yeah, I'm here. Can I take it and slide it back over to off, please? Off of question and answer? Yeah. Um, yeah, everybody has to remute, but sure. So there's 15 people here, and everybody is unmuted. And I'll was quiet for now, but... Hey, Brian. Yeah? It was much easier when somebody just messaged me how many people were in the room. <laughs> right, now you can't see Order one. Hey, we got it. Barbie, I'd just like to make another remark there. I think all, all these issues we've been talking about tonight, uh, it, it all, all, boils, all, all boils back down to the, to the Bundy Ranch. Uh, all these, uh, 
you know, everything that's been happening in the past with the with the violations of the police brutality, the the uh, the IRS, the, the government takeovers of the of executive rules and laws they passed that are unconstitutional. These are all boiling it up to a head to to, to what's been going on at the Bundy Ranch. They're, they're you know they all these issues are coming to a point. I mean, if you just hear the word executive order, that just sounds evil to me. The beginning. It is. Hey, it. They shouldn't be even exist. Um, and, and Obama has signed. The last time I googled it, he signed 149 executive orders in the last. I mean, it's. I mean, it's not even just Obama. I mean, the next guy, the previous guy, pretty much all of them had the same agenda, and all of them still got the same guy's hand up there. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. All of them got. All of them being puppets. And Catholic Church is actually under the spotlight right now. If you guys have been watching what's going on with the Vatican. I'm watching on the Vatican. Uh, without saying too much, because there are some religious people there, but uh, let's just say popes are definitely un- under conjecture for their uh, recent activities with children. They're in a huge scope right now. I, won't well, I don't too much. get that. I don't get that either, man. How um, how all these all this children stuff keep happening, uh, especially with that particular church. But um, expand on that. You can notice that. Uh, Someone who works for a school, or someone who works for a school, is the most likely profession to be a uh, child molester as well in the U.S. Anyway, I can't speak for other countries. And then you've got on top of that a lot of bankers that have been disappearing or have been suicided recently. Uh, a lot of strange things happening in the world all at the same time, just like you said. That's why I tried to chime in. Well, I mean, Russia um, just said that if the if the West uh, messes around with them anymore in Ukraine, which NATO has already been pouring in troops, um, and Russia has been pouring in troops, uh, that Russia will respond with military force like they did in 2008 whenever they said, we're launching missiles in one hour. If you don't back off, and NATO backed off. And um, now, even today, the U.K., the UK, um, Denmark, I'm pretty sure, in the Netherlands, all scrambled fighter jets after Russian bombers entered their airspace. And now they have a bunch of US troops landing in Poland for training exercises. On top of the new missiles that were already sent there at the brink of this Ukraine crisis. Which, uh, it's like another damn World War III starting. We got China pissed off over these islands. And Obama vowing to protect Japan for no damn reason, because all, honestly, all they've done in the recent years is screw us over with the radiation leaking, and it's all the media seems to forget about or just want to cover up. Um, every single other, both the other world wars have started because it's just the U.S. helping out the European nations. Um, both of them. So I uh, see the third one being again. But um, with the U.S. and the conditions and going to another big-ass war is not going to be, I don't think it's going to turn out very well for the U.S. It's, it's, it's bigger than that. It, 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 it's bigger and simpler than that. It, it, it boils down to, to the banking and, and, and monetary uh, um, system we, we're on right now, and we've been on since Woodrow Wilson took us off the gold standard. Uh, oh, yeah, if he... it, 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 it's it, and even more so since World, the end of World War II, when uh, um, the uh, the world the world currency has been the U.S. dollar. I mean, they're um, trying to tear down the, the U.S. The, dollar. The, the, exactly, and they're doing to us what just what we did to the Russians, just in reverse. Uh, with the oil they're doing to us with uh, with our money. Um, we did it to Russia. We we bankrupted Russia through uh, 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 OPEC and oil oil price taking. Um, because that was the only way Russia could sustain their military was through the sale of oil. And the lower the, the, exactly. the lower the price of a barrel of oil got, the less Russia could keep up with the United States on on the military uphill. Uh, that's how Reagan. That was back in the nineties. That, that was back in the eighties when Reagan took power, uh, uh, took office, uh, and rebuilt up the military after Carter uh, united it. And um, and that's how the that's how the the, the, uh, the communist bloc was broken, uh, and that's how we won the Cold War. But uh, the, the same people that are in power are still in power, and the real powers that be are the Federal Reserve and the net in the in the World Trade, the IMF. And uh, yeah, if you look at and the, these, uh, it, like and the these people don't belong to one country. They don't belong to uh, a one belief system. They they are they they belong to their own little group, their own little clique of people, because that. How many there are? There's only a handful of them. Uh, they they they, uh, they pledge allegiance to no one but themselves. 
Can I... one day to see, uh... Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, I'll go after you, Bob. Um, Brian, how long do you leave that checked? Because I saw why you checked it, but how long do you leave it checked for? Uh, until they uncheck it themselves. Oh, okay. Uh, you look at the U.S. or I'm gonna just start off by saying the Federal Reserve Act wasn't even drafted in Congress. It was drafted, I think, it was drafted on an island called Jekyll Island. I think it's off the coast of Florida, but it could be another state like Alabama, perhaps. I'm not sure. Um, but that just goes to show that um, it was not drafted in the interest of the American people at heart. And also, if you look at the U.S. debt ever since the Federal Reserve Act was enacted in 1913. Um, which all the information you can get about it is it's drafted a year, a uh, l- little earlier than 1913, and then it's just enacted, and that's pretty much all the info you get on it. Um, but if you look at the debt after that, it just skyrockets, and almost, um, it's pretty much going straight up. And if you look at, as soon as we get off the gold standard, the U.S. dollar per troy ounce, um, immediately shot downwards, and it became unstable as hell. Um, and it continues to be threat. The dollar is almost at the lowest point that it's ever been. And the market is in a big parallel with what the market looked like right before the Great Depression. Um, is, so I wouldn't be surprised if in this summer uh, something else goes down as well, just like the summer of 1929. And uh, they are, but at the same time, I bet they're trying to bring down the U.S. dollar because they know if they bring down the U.S. dollar as the main uh, world currency, then the U.S. is done for. But the only thing that backs the U.S. dollar is the amount of tanks and planes and men we got and the technologies, all that really backs it because um, of the military strength. So if the dollar gets taken out, uh, we're going to be pretty pissed off over here. But also, uh, if the Russia stops selling oil to Europe and the Europe starts getting oil from America, that's going to prop the dollar back up. So that's what's confusing to me. Because uh, if America starts pumping oil out to the European nations, that's just going to start skyrocketing gas even more. I mean, I was looking at the average gas prices in different regions, and over on the West Coast, the average is like $4 a gallon. So just expect that to be going up, especially if we have another um, Great Depression of the sort. And um, imagine it going up to $20, $30 a gallon, or if the entire dollar collapses, uh, just like the German Marx did uh, after World War One where $100,000 is um, a loaf of bread, then imagine what happens then. I have a friend in, in, in England, and they sell their gasoline, you know, by the liter. And if you equate the what they pay for a liter of fuel to a gallon of gasoline here, they're paying $10 for a gallon of gasoline. Well, yeah, that currency is worth more. As well. No, they, that would be, they, they're paying $10 U.S. for a gallon of gasoline. So, they're you know, what, what, whatever is equivalent to $10 in their money is what they're paying well, for a gallon. The only reason that is is because uh, the U.S. hasn't been completely um, taken over yet. Obviously, if we, if we can still go out and buy a firearm legally, um, then the people who want to do harm to the citizens of this country haven't got their agenda pushed to 100%. And I'm telling you that they're getting pretty damn close. But that's why Europe is begging the U.S. now to start sending them oil because Russia just cut them off. And um, with this incident, these two incidents that happened today, which um, this guy was speaking in English. I think he's the foreign minister for Russia. So he's direct message to the West. Um, we'll just see what happens because if one of the NATO countries gets attacked, which Ukraine is not a NATO country, but we got all these people and banksters funding this uh, stuff going down in Ukraine, putting pumping billions of dollars into there, putting in a false government, um, and probably behind all these terror attacks in the east eastern Ukraine. Just like Operation Gladio in Italy um, quite a few years ago. That could be possible as well. So, I mean, is this um, part two of that? Yeah, well, I really don't know what to think of all oh, that's going on right now. All I know is it's not looking good. From the inside of the U.S., it's not looking good, let alone on the outside of what's going on and what we're already meddling in. Um, we definitely don't need to be out messing around in more foreign affairs like we have been in the last decade or so going into Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, which I disagree with 100%. Dude, I think it was more of an oil explore- exploration excursion, to tell you the truth. But um, this Ukraine deal might end up in a new sort of proxy war going on, just like the uh, Russians in Afghanistan and uh, Vietnam in the U.S. But I do know if one of the NATO countries does get attacked, then the U.S. does have an obligation to go in. So that's definitely not going to end well. 
Uh, it's a mouthful. Yeah, I gotta cut it loose. It's almost 3 a.m. here. Uh, Mark comes one, Barbie. You guys keep up the good work. It's about 15 people in this car right now. If anybody wants to chime in, you're in an open forum. Nobody is needed right now unless you've needed yourself on your own phone. But I'm gonna say good night. I gotta hit the hay. Get up in a few hours. And good night. Barb, you're here. Sweet Thank you. Good night. Good night. Barb, you know you're not. Thank you. Good night. Barb, you know you're not. Good night. Barb, you know you're not. Barb, you know you're not under, uh, any obligation to, you know, stay on board and moderate. You can leave and just leave it open and I trust these people can handle themselves as civil adults. Yeah, I may be heading off here in a few minutes as well. Uh, we all need our rest, guys, so don't... The only thing you didn't show me was how to turn the recording on and off. Ah, uh, and if you look all the way on the left, I have to reset this anyway, but if you look all the way on the left... Oh, okay, I see it. I have to actually reset that right now since I'm splitting anyway. Um, typically they run, it seems to be six hours at a time. Um, the button, did you see, did you see that move from where you're sitting, Bart? Yeah. Now you see the line right above that? Yeah. When you log in, you'll notice that that says off. Yeah. When you come in, that, that, that's what everything that looked blank, I think. You saw this screen, but no details, right? Right. And then when I split right. it on, everything yeah. pops. All right, yeah. So when you come in, keep in mind the conference call is still active, but your interface, that's you turning on the interface. Now, do I have to stay logged into the interface? You, you do not. We could both be out of here, and the call will still automate itself as an open conference call. Just make sure when you leave, you leave it in uh, Q&A off. Okay. Yeah, I don't like that button. It don't slide easily. Yeah, be careful with that. If you literally, you don't have to slide it. If you just, uh, uh, you know how your pointer changes when you go over something? Mm-hmm. So if you just hover over that, you'll see the pointer change. No matter where you click it, just click it. It'll automatically show. Just okay. Click. Um, all right, guys. Well, thanks for all the good wishes, and good night. May the force be with you. Or oh, Shadow, a new cool MP3. Um, just a quick update on my buddy Mike. Uh, we're actually going to be recording three more songs over here. Uh, Sunday afternoon, I invited him to come on by and try and order a pizza, and uh, he wants to get three more songs down. And he's trying to motivate me to do a, a local open mic night out here in the near future. So if you know anybody around Chicago that wants to see something cool for free, he's trying to get me to get people into this. A couple Tuesdays from now, I think. But um, he's throwing that out there. Did you guys, uh, anybody here, not get a chance to hear the cool free the people song he wrote? No, I, I have This is Florida One. I, I haven't heard it. All right. Let me just give you a little background. I've got a couple more minutes. Um, about five years ago is when I started working at this. Uh, there's a venue close to me. It's uh, a bar, 80s rock, uh, rock and roll, some, you know, country, sometimes metal. Um, but it's a venue, it's a bar, it's a full hall, dark, all, all the above. Anyways, I was working there at security, working my way up, and, uh, you know, I was running a couple different shifts, and, uh, there's this man that kept coming in, he would ride his bike, uh, he'd lock it up outside, he'd come in, and he'd never order anything, and, and the, the owner kind of got salty about it, you know, you've got a patron in there, you know, kind of disheveled, came in, sat down, and never ordered. People asked, well, do you want at least the water? No, I'm fine, thank you, don't worry about me, just watching the game. Really kept to himself, and, uh, you know, I took notice to him, he didn't seem really suspicious, but he was obviously by himself, a little disheveled. All right, a little feedback coming in there, I'm going to have to mute that temporarily. Um, but anyway, just for poops and giggles, I mean, I, I carded him like twice, and I know there's no reason to, the guy's well over the age of, you know, 40, but, uh, you know, carded him a couple times. You know, he, sometimes he seemed a little rude, but he just seemed like lonely, if anything. So anyway, one day at the end of the shift, he was still there watching the end of a Bulls game, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was really, really cold out, and uh, I just out of the blue, I knew my shift was ending. I think I caught myself early and let somebody else get some hours, but I was just like, hey, dude, can I buy you a beer? And he just looked at me like, you know, great, the bartender, or I'm sorry, the security guy, you know, harassing me. I'm like, no, seriously, I'll buy you a beer right now. He's like, oh, no, 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 I don't drink, I don't do drugs, nothing like that. I'm like, well, I actually haven't had a beer for like a month and a half, but I'll have one with you, man, just one, just one. And he's like looking at me, and I was, you know, being sincere. I'm like, I'll buy you one, we'll only have one, and that's it. And he's like, all right. So I went and got some Coronas uh, for my wife, who was actually bartending at the time, you know, paid for them. And, uh, you know, walked back over to him, we cracked him open, and we sat there and talked for a minute. And the guy kind of, you know, we got in a little bit of conspiracy theories and just all kinds of stuff. And some commercials came on, and, you know, we both got into our little rants, but we both agreed on a lot of things. And uh, he had a backpack with him. He opened it up, and he had, like, I don't know, maybe 15 CDs, you know, low-level sticker on him, hand drawing. It was a cool drawing. And uh, he's like, hey, man, I've been going to the library, you know, every day for the last few years since uh, since I've been out of my house. And he was trying to be general about that. Um, but this is how I create fun for myself. I, I, I've been writing these short stories. I'm going to give you this one for free, but I'd love for you to check them out and tell me what you think of them. 
oh, wow, that sounds awesome. He's like, well, yeah, you know, this is how I've been getting by. Instead of like begging for change or begging for money, I actually have something to give them that, you know, they could find interest in my product, you know, and I'll, I'll give it to them for a small contribution or donation. People usually throw these five, sometimes ten, sometimes less, but, you know, recommended is five, <laughs> and that's how he's been getting by. I'm like, well, that's actually, uh, that's actually pretty cool, man. Let me take this home. So I took it home, threw it in the computer first thing, started reading, and could not stop reading. Read the whole thing in uh, a few hours, and again, my wife was mad at me, but... Um, I was just flabbergasted. I'm like, this guy's got talent, you know, a couple spelling errors and punctuation, but overall, these are awesome stories worthy of, you know, short, short movies or uh, made for TV movies, believe it or not. And, uh, didn't see him for a couple of days and finally told him, like, dude, this is awesome. You need to get this out. What can I do to help? Uh, we got uh, a volunteer. I actually showed on Facebook, <clears throat> maybe three paragraphs of just one of them. And somebody chimed in and was like, this is awesome. I want to see the rest. I showed her the rest. And she she came forward and offered her services to pay that she was uh, you know, better off than some people, but paid to have them made into soft cover and then paid to have a website made for him dedicated to him so he had an avenue to sell his book. So he's been directing traffic there. Now, as time's passed, uh, again, he was trying to save what little money he does have, and uh, he was running out of money for his storage, where his supplies were, and just stuff that when he got kicked out of his house. Uh, long story short on that, he used to be a carpet layer. He was at the south side of Chicago. Somebody stole his van full of tools and some of his normal belongings, but basically they stole his van. That disappeared. There was a police report. He lost everything, including his job and a girlfriend a few months later, and then his unit, and was literally been living in a tent uh, by the railroad tracks, not very far from my house. Um, for quite a few years. And to get all this from him, I'm just like, wow, you know, being a, you know, a prepper and such, just like, you're the ultimate prepper. You're like a god to us. You survived almost 10 winters in Chicago land. This w- last winter was brutal enough, not to mention the last 10 winters. I repeat, 10 winters out here. And he's just been stuck and, uh, you know, no ID, you know, a, a small debit card that he keeps what he can in there so he doesn't have to keep cash on him. But, you know, he's made his own. The guy's a prepper. Well, he asked if he could stash some stuff under my stairs. I've got a little extra room here and, like, yeah, sure, whatever, man. Bring it over. I'll look out for you. Keep it here. I promise. I won't do anything with it unless you tell me to, you know? So, uh, he filled up my car and came over here and he had a keyboard that he had, uh, had from his own apartment and a guitar. I'm like, oh, wow, you play a little guitar and he smiles at me, you know? Oh, yeah, I play a little guitar, you know? Well, cool. Let me hear something. And I, I can't even explain the blues that comes out of this man. I mean, it's just cool. Well, anyway, he's got 40 songs that he's written over time. And uh, I said, you know what, man? I didn't know you were so talented. Let me break out my little hand drum I've been holding on to for the last uh, decade or two. And uh, let me chime in. You know, you play, you sing, and uh, I'll, I'll drum in, and, and it works. Um, you know, we've been working on doing some live stuff, you know, just to get out there. I want to help him raise some money and maybe get some of this down on CD and, you know, get him at least somewhat digitally remastered so that it sounds you know, professional somewhat, and, you know, get him on some CDs and maybe uh, let him market that along with his uh, story, or together as a package, you know. But anyways, a few months back, he shows up at my house, and he's like, check it out, I've been working on this for a while. I made a song for you, dude. He's like, you know, you kind of helped me out with a lot of things, and this is how I can repay you. I wrote you a song, bro. Check it out. And, uh, you know, we went over it a couple times, and we started playing it, and you know, we reworked it a little bit, and got it as close to where we could with what tools and capabilities we have, but, uh, I told him, dude, I like it so much. I like where it's at. I want to put this up somewhere on the internet. You know, people got to hear this. So we, uh, I started a SoundCloud account. Sorry to be on the tangent there, but we, I started a SoundCloud account. So if you actually just go to soundcloud.com, um, also on my activity on the left side of my page on Facebook, you'll see there's Brian just listening to yada yada on SoundCloud. You can click that. Um, if you actually just type in all one word, free to people, um, that should come up. Let's say, uh, let me just do it right now to give you the exact path. Bear with me. Yeah, it opens up automatically to my page for me. But I believe if you just search free, come on, look, free the people, all one word. Yeah, you'll see that insignia that I've been using. Um, that's a copyrighted image, by the way, of the fish with the red, white, and blue. <clears throat> so that'll pop up, and then you'll see uh, a song that's got the fish with the free the people logo in there. You just press that. It's a three minute and fifty four second song. Unbelievably, unbelievably, five hundred and fifty five people have checked the song out over the last 20 some my days when it's been up, which is awesome. I showed them those numbers the other day. Um, if you go to my profile, you'll actually see four or five different songs. Um, you'll see Brian Duzak pop up. It's a picture of myself and my wife. But he actually wrote a few other songs that I put in here I thought were important. Uh, one was called Razor's Edge, which he wrote. Um, it's about, he basically wrote it for all the, you know, Vietnam veterans that he's known over time. Um, it's about PTSD, man. 
he's been in a real dark place for a long time, and I'm totally trying to pull him out of this hole, dude, and try to get him to the next level. To me, he's like a eccentric artist that's been undiscovered, man. He's like the next Stephen King, and he's a real treat to humanity because his lyrics like speak volumes. It's like folky, bluesy, rocky, all of the country it's all at the same time, man. Um, the other one's called Louisiana Moon. He wrote uh, because of Hurricane Katrina. For a guy that's got not a whole heck of a lot, he's a pretty generous guy. He's already offered this song has no licensing rights to it, but any money, if he could set it up in an actual album and, and, and create or generate something via the song, he would still all donate it all to the uh, victims of Hurricane Katrina, still to this day. And uh, so, yeah, just kind of pointing you in that direction. And there's some pretty cool songs. I did very amateur uh, remastering on some very amateur programs that I was only recently taught how to use, but we did our best, threw a little effect in there, some coolness, and so he wrote all the lyrics, he wrote all the guitar, he wrote all the solo, and then I just kind of chimed in with some drums. The, the drums need some better mic up, but you get the general gist of it. Some pretty cool stuff coming out of this guy. Like, so many people ask if he's African American, and I, I, you know, I keep laughing to myself, no, he's just got that much soul, baby. <laughs> he's, uh, he's definitely got a lot of soul. I, uh, I'm honored to know this guy, you know, other people would just as soon honk at him or spit on him or call him a bum or whatever, but this dude's a national treasure, and uh, I am lucky to know this guy. I call him Uncle Mike now. Uh, his nickname is Mike on a Bike. That's what everybody knows him as around here, Mike on a Bike, because he's always riding his bike. The guy easily does 25-plus miles a day back and forth just doing his thing, sometimes even in the winter when they're still on the ground. He's had a rock, man, but uh, we're trying to help him out. So if you like what you hear, you know, throw a thumbs up or a like on that, maybe share it a little bit. Hopefully someday Mike discovers some of this guy's talent. I'm looking forward to it. He needs it. So hopefully uh, the ones that haven't heard it got a chance to go over there to uh, SoundCloud.com. What's your Facebook page? Uh, Brian with the Y is my first name. And then if you type in the words Free the People, F-R-E-E-T-H-E-P-E-O-P-L-E, all one word, it should be the first one that pops up with a really horrible Polish last name that starts with a D. You'll see a picture of a princess that I'm standing next to, and then you with a little tribal tattoo. I think that's the one I have up. Maybe not. Oh, yeah, I just changed that. No, you'll just see uh, my wife and myself. I, don't, I can't explain. I look like a guy and look like a girl. <laughs> but uh, what, yeah, I'm only... Say, say, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, say, say the Facebook page again. Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, and then a space, and then an F as in Frank, R as in Ralph, E as in Edward, E as in Edward, free, and then the, T-H-E, people, P-O-P-L-E, all one word, no spaces in free the people. And again, I should be the first one that yeah. pops up. Use me. Gotcha. Oh, okay. We're already together there. Okay. I, yeah, I got you. All right. Yeah, I think I, I, I sent you a friend request a couple hours ago, dude. Yeah, dude. I'm on you. All right. Cool. I'll check it out, man. It's, I love that kind of music, man. <laughs> um, okay, if anybody... Go ahead, so come. Well, I was going to ask if anyone in here has ever um, checked out one of those Savage um, 320, 320 pumps before. Hey, can you speak up or all I heard is 320 and that's all I heard? Uh, I was asking if anyone in here has ever checked out those uh, Savage 320 pumps before because uh, I've been looking at getting one. Negative. Yeah, I'm apprehensive to really talk too much about munitions, weapons, what I've seen, what I've shot, what I've got, what I don't have, you know what I mean? Real awkward state of affairs amongst us these days and it's almost, yeah, you know, in the TMI uh, becomes them. Well, I would if I, um, in your state especially, um, Personally, I'm not too worried about it because if someone comes to my door knocking, asking for it, um, I guess I'm gonna, I'm pretty sure that, um, somebody's gonna be dead right before I give up anything. And I'm sure a lot of Americans will agree with me on that. And if, uh, I most, I'm just gonna say most of my stuff is not, um, under my name anyway. So, not too many people will be coming for me. Well, I hope none of them are coming from any of us, you know. We heard that little rumor about uh, a phone call too long turns into a broadcast, blah, blah, FCC. Luckily, that got squashed. Denied, but, you know, in, in case, you know, something of that nature were to affect any one of us that have been in several parts of this conference call, I'm sure that, you know, that we've all been chiming in on a, you know, every other day basis. If we don't hear from anybody for a couple of days, obviously, there's going to be some calls and some things to be done to check up on people, you know. You're right, with the NDAA, people can be disappeared, though. That's something to worry about. That's why we got here in the first place. That's why we're trying to avoid all the way around, you know. I just have this undeniable feeling, you know, calling or whatever you want to call it to keep the conference calls going to move forward. Although the Bundy Ranch is totally important, it is. It's priority one. What got this all started yet? I still got this haunting notion that we really should also be, you know, part B, one, whatever you want to call it, is 
throw some focus at that current, you know, evolving situation that's right around the corner so that we're way more prepared than we were for the previous situation. What's awesome is now all across the country that people all met in one place and then we got all these supplies to that same place and a lot of those were like communications and generators that was a good test run for everybody. Now they know what they need for, but it's a completely different environment. They went from pretty much, you know, almost west coast in the desert of Nevada to now east in an urban business corporate toxicity situation, completely different environment. You don't have to worry about scorpions and dust and as much sleeping bags. You know, how are we going to handle ourselves now? This whole thing is bigger than our, um, even Clive, our Clive had said that um, it, it goes past just the atrocities, so to speak, that have been committed in the last uh, couple of weeks uh, by the government out in Nevada and um, in other states. Uh, it really just boils down to people's individual liberties being taken away. And yeah, that's why so many people showed up, um, is just because that's what the whole movement is about to begin with. I mean, if everyone is only concerned about their individual interests all the time, I'm pretty sure not too many people would be showing up. Um, most, if not all those people out there, um, uh, their minds are focused on not just themselves and, uh, not just what they can get to do, but how other people's liberties are, um, protected as well. Sorry, bro, the last... 15 seconds, you kind of caught it in and out on me. Can you kind of reword the end of that? I caught the first half and then you were kind of gone. I don't even remember the last half. Well, I said, dude, I got that short term memory problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Um, okay. Well, well, I don't know. Sorry, man. And maybe I did too. I'm trying to type here in D3 things at once, but you know, I, I'm sure we all catch the, uh, the general zip, uh, general zip of what you're trying to say. Hey, uh, Mark, you're still in there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I was cool. just checking out, I was just checking out your page there, man. I, I gotta listen to these, some of these tunes, man. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, the man's got some skills. Hey, do you have good audio from where you're at right now? If you were able to play that, would you have, like, computer speakers? Oh, uh, I could hook, I could hook, a, I could hook some up. If you could, man, because it sounded like butt ass. I use my headphones, that sucks, and I use my little computer speakers, that sucks. I don't think I'm giving this song enough justice. And I think it, partially because it's coming in through a phone is the problem, but I don't know if there's like an input. I'd like to put an input or like the MP3 version played off my phone while I'm on a, off a call on that phone probably wouldn't work because it would take over the, uh, yeah, you probably get a lot of feedback and reverb. Yeah, so I'm kind of SOL on that. And I pointed some people in that direction. Others, you know, might not have been able to go there or write that down at the time, driving, whatever. But it's kind of cool. You know, I don't know. It, it, eventually, we're going to be leading this for more towards a radio-ish type of format. You know, when it was dead air or like if Bobby's got to go, it wouldn't be a bad idea if she threw it in, you know, Q&A and just played an MP3 for an hour or two while she went shopping or took this news or whatever the case is. You know, right, exactly. At least, at least there's something there that's informative. If you had a couple songs play and then, you know, maybe another MP3 in the playlist, just, uh, you know, talking into her mic, hey, this is Brian for the people dude. And Barbie, we're not here right now. Thanks for being on our conference call. Last update, everything was cool at, uh, you know, 6 a.m. Central, blah, blah, blah. You know, we'll be back somewhere around 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. You know, keep the number on you. Get a job to Patriots, blah, blah, blah. You know, just something to have. You know, people had mentioned dead space does suck. You know, I'm obviously not here when it when I'm not here, so I don't know what the dead space is like. You know, we've had some people chime in and try to say something, but I'm sure there are some spaces where, you know, it'd be nice, at least when we're at low. Like right now, it's pretty low, 13, but, you know, if we were at 5, you know, might as well give somebody a chance to, you know, put those things in an MP3 uh, playlist and, you know, just drop it down for an hour or two. But I don't think that's too bad of an idea to give uh, Barbie time to rest. What do you think of that, Barb? That would be cool. And I'll throw some ideas off you. When I played, uh, I think it was the third night, the Railroad MP3, did you, were you guys able to hear that? Nope. Shit. Because I, uh, I did the best I could. I, I, I literally tied my cell phone in between the earphones <laughs> of my big headset, um, and tied it in there, you know, with a knot with rope and everything so that the, uh, mouth or the speakerphone piece was right up to the earpiece, but didn't do that enough justice, I'm sure it did. Hey, no, I, there are other kids. Is there a way to uh, talk in this phone line uh, through a computer, or do you have to call me? Say again? Is there a way to talk on this phone line through a computer, or do you have to call in on an actual phone? The only thing I found so far was Skype and Google Phone, Google Connect. Yeah. yeah. Well, Google, yeah, Google, Google also has a, a an app uh, for, it's called Hangout. I've never well, personally used it. I wouldn't but... trust Google Hangout. Uh, and it's pretty, it's just a rip off of Skype, to be honest. And Skype is a lot more safe as far as um, protecting your information wise than Google, in my opinion. But, uh, because I do know if you can call in on a computer, that um, there is a way to set your microphone 
up as the stereo mix on the computer. So then whatever you play on the computer, the speakers would come out and um, it's a pretty high quality through the phone line. Um, Google, I don't know, they, in 2012, they started charging for phone calls through Gmail. And then after that, somehow it just started becoming free for me again on my Gmail account. That, that's all I use it for is the phone calls. But the, the Google's phone line doesn't work for um, this number. For some reason, it just starts, it says this number is disconnected if you call from a Google phone. And then, um, but I guess like every other year it's free calling if you make a Gmail account, unless it's for older users. But, and Skype does cost money as well to call actual phones. But Skype to Skype calling is free. Well, what I found with Skype is if, if you get the premium plan, it's $10 a month. Yeah, um, $10, though, is like, it lasted me a couple months calling people, um, every day whenever I had it, but I didn't use it, um, too extensively. Uh, but Skype is also good for, uh, pretty secure conferences. You, you can't have, uh, unless you pay for the premium, you can't, uh, have video conferences between more than two people, but you can have have as many people you want. I'm pretty sure in um, voice conferencing on Skype. Let's see. Has anybody ever heard of Obo? O O B O O. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, I, I haven't yep. really looked into that too much myself, but I heard it's pretty good. Uh, that's our video capabilities also, from what I've been understanding. Yeah, but I don't know about the conferencing. That may be better. I'll have to check that out. But um, I do know that Skype is encrypted. So, but um, that could still be tapped into uh, any other any other better uh, softwares or uh, companies that have a fiction on their uh, video or voice chat and all that. I don't care if they listen to me. They're going to listen anyway. Well, I mean, now that they just come out publicly and say, yeah, we are listening to you and it's illegal, yeah, but we really don't care. Um, we have to get the Constitution, but it doesn't matter. We've got the Patriot Act, so we can do whatever the hell we want. Um, but the judges that are appointed by our branch, the executive, so. Yeah, the only thing I've ever seen that had uh, a lot of capabilities, had good security, was the uh, TeamSpeak app. Because with that, you can, like if uh, Barbie wanted to tell me something with nobody else knowing, she could do what's called a private message. She just heard me if I typed it out. Or... As far as the moderator feature, it doesn't matter if you have a phone or a computer. You can do that that way also. There's, a, there's also a company that's called Unseen. I think it's mm -hmm. like Unseen.is. And uh, there is a free and a premium. And there's app for iPhone, iPad, and Android uh, computer. And I'm pretty sure you can get calling, video. Um, it's all secure. It's based on iPhone. Because um, some of the best internet products are a, lot of a hell of a lot better than the <laughs> Hey, uh, Tom's one. If you can speak up, it's, I hate to interrupt you, man, but you're not even registering at all on the equalizer right now. Uh, like, so all we hear is just is that is, is, is what I you know, can you hear me now? Know, this is really what I hear. You know, <laughs> and you know, when you're doing so hey, man, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's a lot better, dude. Um, I'm just saying that if your internet is routed through this thing, unseen.is, it's based in Iceland. So uh, if your traffic's getting routed through Iceland, it's less susceptible to snooping um, by the U.S. or whoever wants to listen in. Um, I don't know. I don't really check it out. I do know you can sign up for it. I don't know if all the services are free, though. But there's a lot of stuff out there that um, you could pay for to be pretty safe out there. Or you could just do on your own if you knew a lot of stuff about computers. Um I'm personally do a lot of stuff to route my traffic through different networks whenever I'm surfing the web because I do know that they use that to uh, to put people on lists and whatnot. I wouldn't be surprised if that's how you got on it, Barbie. Um, since Dude, this I is so cool. more concerned about uh, making citizens and actual external threats to the country. Uh, like the CSA, how in the hell does a 16 year old get on a plane undetected flying? Hey, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hey, Mark, go ahead and kill that, kill that, kill that, kill that, kill that for a second. Mark, 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 kill that, girl. Give me a minute. Hold on, let me, Mark, go ahead and kill that, bro. Yeah, it's good. Hey, uh, I want to try something. It's a new feature that I just think I just figured out. Uh, this should, this should only take a few minutes.
got the man who is still strong no more. We're building the game. Ego is broken. Everything has gone wrong. The beat can tell them where they can belong. For all you lawyers that cross the bar, misplaced allegiance, now you know who you are. Greedy bankers, insane world leaders, all have agendas. When you stand in line, fight fight against those who think I might make money. We the people, for the people now. We got to free the people, free the people somehow. We the people, for the people now. We got to free the people, free the people. Thanks our water, come trail boys in the air, mercury and vaccine, no, it's time to be well. Even when things seem not the too far gone, we will stay the course and keep on keeping on. I will stand in line, fight and fight, against those who think that might make right. Do you guys say you're going to have a gig up there in Chicago, in Chicago land, or, or 
Where's the well, there's, there's a couple of there's a there's a couple of open mic nights, man. He uh check this out. He's a real big introvert, bro. He's a big introvert, and he's not one for doing anything like involving people. Period. And I've kind of been chipping away at this shell, man. Working on my brother Mike here, you know. And uh, right. He was here the other day, and uh, well, actually, I can't say the other day. It was a few months back. It was still very cold out, and he's like, "I'm gonna ride my bike over the such and such bar, the biker bar by us that has an open mic night on Tuesdays." I'm like, "You're going there just to scope it out?" He's like, "Yeah." Well, he was just leaving a you know quick practice that we had done. He rode his bike over there, and he's like, "I don't know what came over me, but I set myself up. I set myself up to play. I signed up, and uh, you know, the house mic stage guy let me get on stage, and uh, he got some whistles of standing ovation. People like, offered to hand him food and stuff like that. I'm like, unbelievable. He's like, yeah, I'm out of my shell. He's like, I'm me again, man. People really like that. I didn't expect that kind of reaction. And he's like, people were whistling. And the girls were like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And uh, it, it only motivated me, motivated me to help do what I've got to do to get this guy that what you just heard and as many songs as I possibly can in the near future. So they're on one CD. He can multiply that. And I'd love to see him, you know, sell that in his book for like 10 bucks. I'm sorry, I can't say so. But he would offer those for a contribution, <laughs> you know, considering his situation. No, oh, man, I, I would love to have a hard copy of, uh, of that. I could play on my hi-fi, man. For sure, man. The, uh, that Razor's Edge song, man, if you really read the lyrics and listen to it, the soul coming out of his voice. There's a couple of dudes that have PTSD and they're sitting there like, my God, was this guy in Nam? And I'm like, actually, he wasn't in Nam. He's got, a, you know, he's got his own issues and things he's been through, but I wouldn't put it as far as, you know, uh, a military PTSD issue, but you know he's got his own thing and he's been there in in his own way, you know. And they're like, wow, like you know, I've I've actually said some of these words to myself, you know, in certain times when things were rough, you know. He's like, I know it. So I'm trying to say the guy's been there. Like, wow, I love these guys' work. And luckily, it's reached out to some of the guys who kind of have those issues and you know let them know they're not alone, man. You know, call here, you know. If there's guys with PTSD issues that need somebody to talk to, you got a whole bunch of people that will support you right here on this call, man. At all times. So if anybody's like down in PTSD zone, definitely call in. Listen to that song. It seems to help. Let you know you're not alone out there. You know, it's just a big thing that I've had to deal with at work. Uh, you know, 70% veterans where I work, man. And, uh, you know, a couple of these guys have had some serious issues, active duty stuff. And it's, uh, they've had to deal with since they've come home. And, you know, we try to hire vets to help cushion that blow and help them work their way back with their skill set into society and, and, you know, so do something that they love doing that's patriotic and cool. But, you know, sometimes, man, things get tense and you get frustrated and things aren't going your way. And, you know, that was his like, I, I kind of had the same, the same kind of thing when I got out of the service. Of, uh, and, and I found that, well, this was back in the, you know, late 70s, early 80s. Uh, they didn't really, uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't recognize it. You know, they didn't do, have a, uh, an active, you know, they, they recognized it as a as problem, but they didn't acknowledge it and they didn't uh, actively uh, pursue treatment for people. They just gave you a bottle of pills and said, hey, go deal with it on your own, right? Um, right. Uh, you know, and I, and, you know, I'm not one to do, to do drugs. Uh, I have a really addictive personality, so I, and I recognize that in myself, so I, I don't, I, sh- I shy away from anything that I can become addictive to. Um, so I, I gave the pills up, you know, I just, you know, didn't even really give them a chance, and, uh, I just got involved, you know, in doing something, you know, and, and doing something uh, you know, chase your mind off of things, and um, it, it's an outlet, you know. And if you can find out the right outlet, and it sounds like this is what this guy has got is, is found in his music and his lyrics. Um, you know, he's he's on the right path, dude. I mean, he just he needs to work through it. So you should see this man's story. It's like you you pull it. I, I won't put it into like I can't even explain it. It's a mix of like sci-fi, mystery. Uh, uh, there's just so many various. Here, let me give you just a clue. There's this one story he wrote, the first one I wrote that encapsulates this genius idea. You gotta hear this. I'll, I'll make it as brief as possible. Uh, scene is set. There's a sick kid laying in bed and his little sister, or sorry, his older sister sitting over him in bed saying a prayer. The kid speaks about how he was really sickly as a child and how the family has sent him money over time and, you know, they, they've all been quite well off. And, uh, even though he's a sickly child, you know, they've still got nannies and such looking out for him and his sister and, with the money that he's received from family and the get well cards, he's been giving his sister a portion to continue to pray for him. And as time goes by, he's still sickly and his sister is still praying for him and he still sends her money on a weekly basis and then eventually a larger sum on a monthly basis. And as they get older, he still continues to do it. It's not a habit. And uh, what they realize is that, is that they're onto something and they actually find more people that will pray for people that are sick. And as there's a team of whatever it is, let's say a two dozen people that will go to hospitals and pray with the sickly people maybe that have just gotten out of surgery or uh, you know, are trying to get better. Uh, 0610, if you want to mute yourself out, that'd be cool. Just press uh, star six and you should be able to mute yourself out. Um, and then come back in when you wanted to chime in. Um, but so his story basically moves into, all right, now the hospitals have reports that 
for actually having an effect and that the healing rates are faster, the healing rates are um, more successful long term, like let's say cancer patients, et cetera, leukemia, whatever. But there's a higher healing rate because all these people are hands on praying with them, praying for them. And this guy starts generating this new, I don't even know what you want to call it. It's a business, you know, but he was basically hiring people to go to these places and, and pray hands on to help them. And since they could prove that they were having an effect, the next scheme was where the uh, president is giving them a contract of $10 million a month to have them pray for the cabinet, the house, Congress, the president's men, you know, yada, yada, and pray for them because they're having a profound effect. So these people are generating an income just for by praying. And just one thing leads to another. It gets really sci-fi all of a sudden. And it's got a little X-Files and it was just, my jaws dropped. Like just that concept alone, starting off, that is a great idea. And that's just one of his stories. That's just one of his dozens of them. Awesome. Isn't that a great and, idea? You know, and that's, and, and that's, uh, uh, that is actually the concept, that whole concept of, of karma and, and positive thought and likewise negative thought, you know, it all has an effect. And if it's amplified, you know, the effect is even greater. And the scenarios out of that are just awesome. I can, I can see that. That's genius. But, you know, some government thumb is going to put their thumb down or some naysayer is going to disprove something or find, you know, another study that with placebos that'll take years for them to get any grants to even start that, you know. But I bet you I kind of believe in that, you know. I, I, I you know, I don't want to say laying of the hands where they're pulling out livers out of people without making decisions, you know, those voodoo wannabe witch doctors type, but, you know, to actually have a, a group of, you know, sending an energy to a specific person, you know, we all have different energies, but, you know, people that are maybe a little bit more in tune, a little healthier. Well, I'm not sure if you're familiar mind. with the uh, with the talk show host on Late Night, um, uh, what's his name, uh, Coast to Coast, uh, what's his name, Normie, is from, actually he's from St. Louis here, uh, uh, but he did an experiment, at one time he was broadcasting from New Zealand, and uh, he did a, a, on AM radio, he did a, an experiment that they had randomly chose a person in critical condition uh, in an L.A. hospital, and the only information that was given out about the child was their their first their gender, their first name, and their age, and, and the location uh, on the West Coast. It wasn't even a hospital's name or or town was not given, and uh, the audience was directed to pray for uh, uh, like a three minute time period, and uh, everyone was on the same page, praying, sending out good vibes and thoughts towards this person, uh, this child in the, on the west coast of America with this critical condition. With, I, I, I don't recall the, uh, the, the, the child's name. But anyway, the gist of the story, this child made a, a complete 180 recovery from their, from their illness. And they, they, you know, it's like, that, that's impossible. So uh, you, your issue, you, you mentioned earlier, you, you had mentioned that you had gotten an accident with your truck on a hill that was you, correct? What's that? Was that you who had mentioned you had been in an, uh, an ice accident with your truck on a hill by your driveway? Was that you? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I forgot which gentleman mentioned that earlier, but I actually had a question if he was still on the line, too. <clears throat> um, How many hours would you say you got invested in this uh, phone conversation? Last couple of days, in a week, did you say? I, I called in probably two weeks ago and listened for about four hours. And uh, the population of the conference call went from 50 to 500. A couple times it went up to 800. Uh, it was pretty chaotic, uh, pretty intense. Uh, couldn't get a real sense of any direction out of the conversation, particularly when there were more than uh, 100 people in the room. Uh, no one seemed to be yielding to uh, a person holding a, uh, holding the, the conversation stick. <laughs> um, yeah, that's when I figured out how to do Q&A. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, I, and so I, I kind of, after the uh, four hours, I, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of was overwhelmed uh, a little bit by the uh, the amount of uh, of uh, chaos that was going on over over the same issue, and didn't I, it kind of really bummed me out because it, it was just kind of like I, I I equated it to more of the same. You know, it was uh, um, nobody wants to yield; everyone wants to right away. And um, and everybody wants to uh, um, too many chiefs, not enough Indians, I guess maybe. Um, so I, I I just kind of of uh, uh, didn't call back in the next day or uh, about a week later I called back in and there was about maybe 50 people in the in the in the on the conference line and and uh, um, I got pretty good information but it still was unclear and, and things were still kind of going off subject and uh, uh, 
And then again tonight, well, and tonight was the last time I called. Uh, you know, it's my third time calling in, and um, I, it was this was the really the first time I really had, said, had spoke up and said anything. And uh, and I, I really didn't want to. Uh, I, I didn't want to uh, really. My focus of of what I was saying first was, you know, uh, I didn't want to to focus that comment towards uh, um, the people that were talking, but it was uh, the uh, the issue of of splitting, uh, you know, uh, uh, dividing the conversation and and, and small bickering uh, amongst uh, each other, and, and, and that needs needs to uh, um, be our. our our efforts need to be more focused, our, um, and the message needs to be more clear. And, uh, and this is a great platform, uh, and the Q&A thing is probably the best way to go because then you have a, a control mechanism to to uh, keep order and, and to get the point across. Um, so all together, I think I have probably, I've got uh, four hours or three and a half, four hours in tonight. So all together, I've got probably ten hours of, of on, on conference calls with you guys, and tonight was the most productive. I mean, as far as, as getting the avenue of where to get the correct information, who who was actually uh, running the board, uh, uh, actual name, uh, uh, good places to find out information, good inform uh, good information where to, I can donate and uh, uh, use my a uh, my uh, assets to buy uh, supplies for for the movement and how to do it. Uh, you know, um, where where to steer, what uh, Facebook pages to steer away from. Uh, you know, these are all useful. Uh, useful things that that everyone needs to know. Um, you know, if they want to participate in in, in the Bundy, um, in, I, I don't want to call it movement, or because it's not really moving. It, this is a it's a war. You know, this whole issue is a war, and and and, and it's a war that's almost came to a, a, a blows the other day, and uh, and it would have been really sad for our nation if that would have happened because it, it wouldn't have stopped there. I'm afraid. Um, so the the the, the, the cloud and the fog cleared up you need a uh, 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 signpost uh, of, of true people that, that have solid information and direction and uh, in, the, in the militia to be um, uh, set for you know it, as, as they've always been uh, in the military tradition with a chain of command you know and, and let the, the uh, ex, uh, experienced militiamen uh, handle what they handle the best and and, and be sure that they that uh, people that aren't um, uh, interfering with their activities by by just just misinformation can really screw that throw a, a, a monkey wrench into things and unintentionally. Mr. Mark, so, uh, I'm sorry. Mr. Mark, this is Barbie again. I'm still here. Hi, Barbie. I was okay. being quiet. I'm gonna take that as a uh, um, Barbie. You're doing a good job, and I'm gonna say thank you to you. <laughs> oh yeah, you're doing an awesome job. I I, I like when I can hear things like that. I'm glad that you got all the information you were looking for. And if there's anything else that I can get for you, you just holler at me and let me know. I will, you know, and that and that's and, and that's what I'm glad because I, I really I'm glad I spoke up tonight and uh and, and and brought that up because I got solid information now. If I have a question, I know exactly who to go to to find out the information. If you don't have the information, I know you'll be able to find the information out for me and I'll be able to trust it. Yes, sir, because I'm a double verified. And, 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 to you. and that's me. If I can trust information, I'm more. I have more vested in 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 the movement and being and more willing to to participate because I I'm not. I don't feel like I'm being lied to or or taken for. I, my my efforts are going towards something. And I, and I think you know. I, I think other people will feel that same feel that same way also. That they may not be you know. Well, if I give you this, or I'm just am I just being played or 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 am I being scammed or something? You know. I, I think when you have a solid a solid uh, base of communication and a trustworthy uh, um, mechanism to, to to contribute, uh, people are more apt to contribute. I think so too. I mean. And and it, we do good around here with a lot of our information. And I always constantly tell people, you know, if you see something that's false, post on there. This is false information. Don't feed into the feedback you're going to get because you're going to get nasty remarks. Just this is false information. Please. I've had really good luck so far with people being able to do that. Um, but I do want to interrupt you for a moment, Brian. Yes. Um, there is somebody that is on the line right now that I have been dying for you to meet. And I would like to introduce her to you because I don't think you've actually talked to her, but she has listened to the audio tapes. Would you, uh -oh. can you say hello for a second? Sure. Michelle, say hi to Brian. Hi, hi, this is Brian. How are you, Michelle? You put in quite a bit of time listening to these calls as well, eh? Michelle, you gotta hit star six and unmute yourself, honey. 
Holy what cow, that was hard. <laughs> Hey, this is Michelle from Oregon, y'all. <laughs> How's my honey tonight? What's up, Chrissy? Hi, how are you? Nice to meet you, new, 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 what's your name? That was Mr. Mark. Uh, uh, Mark? Well, yeah, I, I'm Brian, and Mark's actually muted out. Oh, okay. Well, nice to meet you, Mark. Mark's yeah, actually muted nice out. This, this is hey, Brian. Hey, nice Mark. to meet you also. Nice to meet you also. Thank you. Okay, are y'all ready to hear about my day? I have fun driving around town today. It's awesome. I love handcuffs. <laughs> I love cars. Say that again? Yeah, yeah. You were driving around and what happened? What, what was that announcement? Uh, you guys? Don't, don't hit star six in between, Michelle. You guys just keep talking. Yeah, I was hearing that announcement. Anyway, um, excuse me, I was choking on a tomato. <coughs> anyway, see, where shall I start, kids? Um, you were, I dri you were no driving way. around and what happened? Well, I said, uh, I'm having fun. Pissing off the and shit all day. But anyway, uh. <coughs> you gotta talk louder, honey. I, uh, uh, yeah, new phone, I said. Anyway, I went to the BLM office and made sure that we didn't, you know, we have to verify everything. So I had to make sure that we don't have any corrupt BLM officers here. And I knew we didn't, I just had to have verification. <laughs> Wonderful people down there. <laughs> Barbie, before I forget, <laughs> a guy named Clint, he's with a U.S. Uh, GI, because I'm helping him with the case that I know, uh, I had a boyfriend for a minute last year. And we think he, pretty sure he killed some BLM horses up here. But anyway. So I'm helping to hang him up by his neck guy. But, uh, All right. I met the FBI guy. Well, it just turns out that guess what? He used to be a hacker for the government, so he can help me. My phone is just about to start, it's going to start working again, Barbie, but I might have to have eventually, have, you know, keep looking for another phone for me. Because mine is so stinking obsolete, I can't get the, the hacker, uh, security on my old phone. So just, you know, but no hurry. Anyway. Um, I did um, piss off all the cops the all day long. They love me so much. Um, my uh, U.S. guy or U.S. guy is in a uh, excuse me. What's the phone closer to your mouth? Pardon me. What's the phone closer to your mouth? Are Are you on speakerphone, Miss? Yeah, should I turn it off? You, yeah, I'm okay. hearing everything but you. Okay. I haven't used my phone very much. All right, is that better? No. Well, uh, yeah, it's a lot better. You can actually back okay. up a little bit. You just redlined a little bit. Okay, just how's that? Perfect. Better? Okay. Yeah, we're All right, anyway. Okay, cool. Um, the cops had asked me, um, I don't know, a few days ago, you know, if I wouldn't be on my speaker down by the courthouse. Well, they've been following me everywhere today. There is, there's something going on in this town. I don't know what. There's a million freaking cops here. I haven't seen this many cops in this town for a long time. And then they had that little crew following me around. I don't know. <laughs> They're pretty pissed off at me. But anyway, I um, thought, well, since they're still harassing me, <coughs> this was before the handcuffing incident, um, that I'm just going to go up by the courthouse and, you know, make a lot of noise. And boy, did I. Because, you know, hey, you're not my daddy. You can't tell me where I can have this big old speaker right here. So I, I just uh, announced to how corrupt her um, cops were here. You know, I said a few inspiring things to the courthouse. There was people in every freaking window watching me. And then it got even better because when I got done, this car pulled up behind me. <clears throat> with a couple in it who introduced myself, and she's up on the Simpson oil, and she gave me a little bit of medicine for tonight. It was awesome. And uh, what else, Barbie? This guy might be investigating you a little bit because he wanted to verify that you weren't a troll because I have direct communication with you you and Brian. So don't be surprised if he, you know, you hear that he's checking me out. He's cool. He's helping me a lot. <clears throat> Just wants to make me safe. Okay. And all these cops, um, all these cops out here, you know, as far as they know, they know I've lost my CC. They know I'm packing, but I'm really not because I just tell them that. Just to, you know, I just have pepper spray with me. I don't have a gun in my truck. Anyways, uh, let's see what else happened. Oh, and then I got I got done, you know, cruising around here and there, and I I have my flashers on when I go through town, and I've been honking a lot, you know, because that's legal freedom of speech and shit. But they pulled me over because I was honking my horn. I was like, really? Are you fucking serious? So I'm calling these names. And this was a few nights ago, you guys. I, you have to picture I picture me visually. Three cops screaming at them. Don't lie to me, you motherfuckers. And so on and so forth. I mean, it got pretty bad. I was like, I'm proud of myself. I always want to do that to cop. But anyway, hey, they're pretty riled up about me. Michelle. And that's about the news, you guys. Michelle. Yeah. Brian yeah. doesn't know what you did to your truck. Tell him what you did to your truck. Have they seen the pictures? No, I haven't seen them yet. They're on on there somewhere. I can't remember who's got them right now. There's pictures of my pickup. Uh, who has them? Um, I, I'll think of it here in a minute. And there's also, oh, I did get radio coverage, I guess, because uh, some folks were out here from Portland the other day, and they had their phone, and he was videotaping me, so he got it on to Lars Larson here uh, in Portland, Oregon, I guess. And I haven't listened to it because I just got home. 
Well, I didn't just get home, but anyway. And that's on the internet too, but I can't, I wrote the name of it down on my hand, but I washed my hand, so that kind of sucks. The, 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 K, 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 yo, laughing at my ass, aren't you? <laughs> Who's in here with us? That's only because K, it's K, K, S, K, a son of a, K, A, is something in the radio. <laughs> I can't tell if it's an eight or not. Anyway, I'll find out. <laughs> oh, and I need y'all to check a name for me because I got a troll that uh, want me to friend it, and its name is Sherry Scott Hall. Do you any, any of you guys know that name? On Facebook? I'll check it out for you. Yeah, please do. I, yeah, because uh, I had, met, or it had messaged me or whatever, and I think I, oh, I might have been the one I said fuck you to. I'm not really sure. I, I'm, you know, I'm kind of short on patience with people right now. Yeah, that most looks like <laughs> that, that uh, Sheriff Scott Hall, yeah. Is that the Sheriff? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't see these cops in there. <laughs> I'm like, really? You're going to freaking arrest me? And, you know, I know what to say when you get stopped, you know? <laughs> Like, he's going to lock me up for uh, not showing him his, my ID. And I said, I don't have to show you my ID. And blah, blah, blah. He's telling me all these laws. And, I, and I'm telling him, well, I know my laws, you son of a bitch. I've got a technically, well, actually, realistically, I've got a seventh grade education. And I'm smarter than this goddamn cop. <laughs> and, you guys, this is this is quite entertaining me. I have a bet going with my uh, USDI guy going. He thinks, because I've gotten two different calls now on my phone that came up all zeros. Well, he's thinking it's, he, no, what was, it? anyway, something like that we bet on. I bet him five bucks. He wouldn't go to ten because he knows I'm on SSI, but some bet. We put a bet on something. I'm going to win. He's, he's the pro, you know, the college educated guy. <laughs> he's, he's really good people. And he'll be on my, uh, he'll be friends of mine here pretty soon, Barbie. Okay. Well, Michelle, we got to let Ryan get to bed. Okay, yeah, I got to get off here anyway. I'll, I'm going to listen in for a while, but I got some shit to do, and I'm going to sit down and relax. So, Brian, go get some sleep. Are you caught up on your sleep? Negative, but it's okay. We can come uh, in. I, on I, I got good night, Michelle. Good night, you guys. What was the name I'll of that woman? What was the name of that woman that you said the, the, the troll Sherry what? Sherry Scott Hall. It was like a, what's a, a piece of paper. Yeah, Sherry Scott. It's got a space in it in Hall. Sherry spelled with a Y. Scott is S C O T T Hall. <clears throat> that one, it gave me the creeps when her little icon showed up there. And I don't know, my cow and hackles kind of came up. But it's so funny here, I got to share this with you guys because my sons, uh, everything is all good with my sons again, by the way, Barbie, both of them, because one had disowned me and that's all resolved now. But um, <clears throat> they were so worried about me, you know packing a gun and shit, and I said, well, honey, I'm just going to go home and go to the back roads and relax a little bit, and don't you drink a beer on the way home, Mom. <laughs> you know, I said, you're not my mommy, son. <laughs> All right, guys, anyway. I'm out of here. I'm yeah, really I got to go. Time. I'm eating out, Brian. Get some rest. I'll, like I say, Barbie, I'll be here for a few minutes, so. Okay. Okay, honey, love you all. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Hi, Barbie. Okay, Brian, good night. Hi, who said hi to me? Ah, uh, just me. There's no just me. I know that certain just me. Tell everybody else who you are. Chicago Trucker, what's up? Welcome back, Chicago Trucker. Did you have a good day today? Well, I slept through all of it. But, uh, back at work. Well, that's good. You got some sleep. Yeah, I got a few hours of sleep. I'm tired. I can't wait to get back this morning. My pillow's calling my name. Yeah, my, I lose everybody's phone. My name too. Hey guys, this is Chuck. Just calling in to say good night. I just got our video posted. I got to take my doggy for a walk, and I am fried. Night, Chuck. Thank you. Good night, darling, and I will talk to y'all tomorrow. Have a good night, Chuck. Thank you, my friend. I'll talk to you later, guys. Hi, Joe. What video? Um, when Boots on the Ground called in earlier, he did a, a voice video with it, and he posted it to the community conference page. Oh, uh, he posted it where? To the community conference call page. Oh, okay. I didn't know there was one of those. Uh, what, how do I get on that? It's on Facebook. Barbie? Yes. I think that he could be an anonymous number, a member with his voice. <laughs> yes. Okay, Sorry, Mark. Yeah, that's okay. It, it's just community conference call. It has the same icon as Brian's profile. Community conference call? Call, yes. Oh, is it community conference call or hall? C-A-L-L-S. C is in cat, A is in 
Alpha, L as in Lion, L as in Lion, and S as in Scorpion. And no, I do not know the proper protocol for them, but I like to have fun making up my own. <laughs> You're fine. But um, boots, on the, boots on the Ground called in and he recorded that. He recorded something else, and I don't remember what it was. But I know it's posted on the page. And if it's not on that page, just check on my page because he posted on both places. Did you find it? I think if you look on my page, I just posted it out on somebody else's. Uh, if you give me a minute, I'll go upstairs and post it on yours. I had to take the doggy's body. So I'm coming to you live from my backyard. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it would be if the moon wasn't hiding over there behind the trees. Oh, I, I, I think I found it. Patriot News Network. It has the phone number right along the top. Yes, gotcha. Hey, Barbie. I just wiped it. Yes, sir. I just want to give kudos to you uh, because uh, you do give out uh, good information on a daily basis. And uh, anybody that needs information, if they ask, you get it for them. And uh, every day I've been listening, you uh, you help everybody out. So well, here's a pat on the back, girl. Thank you. Hey, get that hand up there. All right. Oh, I got to keep both hands on the wheel. <laughs> Boy. Barbie, you're being <laughs> naughty tonight. You just gotta go, just gotta go blink, 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 blink. Go so fall back in the seat. I can't hit the dash. Well, actually, I am going to have to lay down tonight, guys, because I have to go to the hospital tomorrow and have a test done at 10.15. So, have you in our thoughts and prayers at 10.15? Yeah. It, it's nothing big. It's just a sonogram. Oh, you're going to leave us alone with Michelle? Not <laughs> by then. <laughs> I Whatever, Barbie. You're yeah. addicted to this. You're addicted to this phone line, honey. You know you are. <laughs> it's a lot of love in this room. <laughs> Did you get that? I had a. They gave me a hundred and sixty dollar ticket. You guys. I For what? Yeah, that's Barbie. <laughs> well, I, I, I was honking my horn. I, you know, did, 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 just to get you know attention to people, and uh, they're they're pissed off at me. Well, where, they don't like me. They, what, what town was this in? I live in Prineville, Oregon. Oregon. We say it gun. It's not Oregon, people. It is actually pronounced Oregon. <laughs> <clears throat> I told the, the, uh, the, my U.S. friend there that I said, I, I'm not going to pay it. I said, I can't afford it. I've spent that much in extra money this month just getting my message out, you know. So, screw them. They're just doing it to be, you know, pricks because they're mad at me. Well, the truth hurts so, sometimes, right? You know, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're really pissed off at me. Well, they know I'm going to sue them because I told them so to their faces. I'm going to sue the, the, the sheriffs and, the, and our uh, city cops and the city of Prineville probably. I got, oh, Barbie, I met this guy that he's been through all kinds of legal stuff with uh, corrupted officials. So they're going to help me because <clears throat> I have no idea to go about, you know, certain lawsuits and shit. So he's going to help. Him and his wife are going to help me with that. I've got, I got the state behind me. I made so much progress today. <clears throat> town's pretty much locked and loaded. So, uh, yeah, I got flyers out all over. You guys would be so proud of me. I wish you could be out here. God damn it. And then I had just, I was fixing to come home because I was getting really tired, you know, and I went out to my my uh, uh, naked lady. She's my truck driver friend. And I uh, went out to fill her on, in on what's going on, and she had just talked to Clint, this, this uh, guy, and I guess he was still here in town, so it worked out perfect. <clears throat> so I just had to get that to him real quick. <clears throat> but he's going to be a lot of help. He's going to be a lot about hacking and stuff, so it's pretty cool. I've always wanted to learn about that anyway. But if anybody had said anything about, remember that one night, Barbie, I said something about maybe we should uh, <clears throat> give a holler out to Anonymous. Maybe I need some help out here in Oregon. So I, I don't know if they ever got that message, if anybody ever posted it or not. They could have stepped in and helped too. I don't know. Mm. Uh, the thing about uh, anonymous, they're not a group. Right, right. Okay. I was just think I was just thinking, you know, to post on their page that Oregon needed a little help or something, you know, because I was being hacked so bad. They backed way off because they let me onto the computer. I guess I'm out of the corner again. And they let me out of my room. Well, you better be good, or they'll put you back in your corner. Oh, geez. I've even texted back to that whoever's hacking my phone. I've, you know, get a text and say, fuck you, and I'm just, you know, whatever. <laughs> Hack away, sons of bitches. I got a seventh grade education, and I've managed to stay one one tiny step ahead of the hackers, you know. So I'm not doing too bad, I guess. <laughs> well, what am I going to do with you, young lady? 
I don't know. Who's in here with us? Everybody wants to. I got a few ideas. Oh, I got some rocking ideas, you guys. I know how, you know, uh, it's like I said, man, I know how to shut this government down in one freaking day. It's simple. It's real simple. And I know how to shut, go ahead. If you don't hush for a second, nobody can say hi to you. I'm so excited. I had such a good day. I'm sorry. I'm really happy. And I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Me too. All right. I'll shut up. Okay, everybody. Say hi to Michelle one at a time. No, right. Michelle. <laughs> You know, I'm really? trying to be quiet. You don't make me laugh. In November, where is step out? He'll be ready. Okay, that was my next question. So everything's cool at the ranch. Anything new that I don't know about since I've been off here so long? Um, everything's cool. Everything's calm. They had a dust storm. Well, not last night, but the night before. Blew some tents away. Um, oh, really? Wow. Some problems with the engine gun. But otherwise, everything's good. So what are they, what are, uh, boots on the ground and militia and everything? Are they just kind of taking, taking turns, you know, little groups partying here and there just to relax? Is that how they're working out? Cause I know people party and want to drink beer and shit. No, they're working hard right now. They gotta get everything back to the way it was before. Right. Destroyed. Right. And I made damn sure today that I got, <clears throat> let's see, I got flyers. I have flyers, at, or a flyer at the feed store here, and they're gonna make copies and, you know, just stack on the counter and stuff, and I hit a lot of stores today, we've got flower, or, uh, flyers hey. out all over town. Hey Michelle. Yeah. Since Mark's new, why don't you tell him what you did in front of Pickles Produce? Which time? The first time when they came out and gave you that present. Oh god, honey, I can't even remember. You'll have to fill him in. I've, I've talked and seen so many people the last few days, I can't remember nothing. <laughs> Our dearest Michelle went out in front of her local grocery store and stood there recruiting patriots. And the people inside the store came out and gave her a bullhorn. Well, I wasn't actually I wasn't actually recruiting too many down there because I just I I go to pickles all the time to get you know my my food food is my medicine for my cancer. And he's like, I got a bullhorn. I said, What the hell are you doing with a bullhorn? He says I used to protest. I said, What what were you protesting? And Joe says, Any fucking thing I wanted. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Barbie, they're so happy because, you know, they, I've told them about the recognition that they've gotten already in our conference line and everything. And they're just, they're amped about it, man. It's so cool. Because they're a new business in our town. And this town here, I mean, there ain't no jobs. There is a nothing here. Well, you know, uh, I will take up any excuse I can to say the words pickled produce. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they're amazing. They're, you guys would just love them. I think Joe will probably be calling in on like the conference call here one of these days. I just told everybody, just introduce yourself, you know, as Oregon. Don't mention my name for a few more days until I'm, I got the packing issue resolved because I, it, even my foster dad, when he jumped on Facebook, he had not been on Facebook for three years. And as soon as he went there and was checking out Bundy Ranch stuff, uh, he caught a virus immediately when he went into Facebook. And I said that it's me because usually after one or two phone calls, whoever's phone I'm using will start getting hacked. And I don't know who's done it. And see, this this uh, USDI uh, guy, we, that's what we put the money bet on. He thinks it's somebody hacking me that's trying to steal my identity, which, you know, go, go for it. Yeah, but I got nothing. But I bet him five bucks that it's the Fed. I know I'm right. I'm going to win that five bucks. And he's a professional hacker for the government, but I think he's dead wrong. Don't you, Barbie? I have no idea anymore. Oh, come on. This isn't just somebody looking to steal my identity for shit's sake. It's my computer. It's my phone. I mean, they even affected my router wouldn't even come on when I had to plug in. Yes, but I had a horrible day today. What's wrong, honey? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I'll just talk about it later when we're off the phone, okay? Okay. okay. All right, cool. As long as you're okay. <laughs> I'll text you while I'm sitting in the doctor's office. Mm. Yeah, so y'all, I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta get the kitties ready for get them up and get them going. So y'all have a good night, good morning, and uh, I'll talk at y'all later. I'll be on later today. All, All right. right, nice to meet you, Mark. Come back whenever nice you want. Nice to meet you too. What's that? You're you're welcome to come back whenever you like. We'll be here. Somebody will be here. Thanks, thanks, Barbie. It's nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you too. Talk to you guys later. All right. Bye. All right. Have a good one, man. Stay safe. This is Florida One. Can you hear me? Yes, Florida One. I unmuted you. I know. I can't. He keeps muting me. <laughs> um, that's because there's some kind of static in the background. It sounds like you have the TV on and it's feeding back in. But I don't have no TV on. Oh, uh, well. Dude, when you say a sentence, I guess I shouldn't do it while I'm talking. But when you say a sentence, 
And then when you go to talk again, just hit it and talk again. Yeah, I'll mute it. Yeah, there, there's huh? something in the background that I can hear. Wow, what is that? Oh. Somebody's got their TV on or radio on, That's a, and they, they, uh, they're they yeah. not muted. Is that yeah. what that is? He muted himself. It takes, uh, it, it takes him a minute. You just got to have a little bit of patience. Ah, uh, there it is, yeah. See, it wasn't me this time. Fresh out of <laughs> I'll brush out patience, man. Well, get some, man. What's the matter, Florida? Oh, that wasn't Florida, Michelle. Oh, I thought that was Florida. I'm sorry. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> Chicago the only one running out of ah. This is oh, okay. Florida. Is it better? Yeah. Yeah. What did you do? I just, I don't know what I did. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Sometimes if your cell phone is sitting too close to your speaker, it can give that kind of feedback. Or any that is, like, in line with each other. What, like speaker or your computer speakers, Barbie? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm. That kind of I don't know that noise is coming back. No, no. You're doing something. Let Barbie, let, can you mute me real quick? Maybe this, I have no idea. I've never talked on this phone on here. so. Oh, I already left the control panel. I don't need the control oh. panel for you guys. Okay. Usually if I tell you to mute, you, you mute yourself out. Everybody's good around here. Okay, now don't y'all mute you, mute yourself around and nobody talk to. It wasn't me because I was already muted. Well, it got quiet when I muted. Did it make any difference, Barbie? Could you tell? Was it my phone? It might have been. Well, now I'm unmuted and it's not making noise. Well, you said it takes a minute or so, though, huh? Well, Florida One's back on too. He's not muted. <laughs> Are you Florida One? Yeah, I'm muted every time I uh, say something, and after I get done saying something, I'm muted. Okay, mm -hmm. that's what I do anyway, too. Are you okay, Florida okay. One? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, you want to shoot me a phone call real quick? Yeah. Uh, you got my number? Yeah, I have it. Okay. Okay, Michelle, you want to entertain the monkeys? <laughs> how, long how, long to, how long do I have to stay in the room? I'm not in the corner, right? No, you're not in the corner. Okay, okay, cool. You can, flirt, you can flirt with Chicago Trucker. He likes being flirted with. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey, Chicago. Hey, baby. <laughs> hey, baby. What's going on? <laughs> not much. <laughs> Oh, let's see. I'm sitting at home, chilling with my dog, having a beer, and oh, I really need to put that oxygen on my face, I guess. <laughs> I'm treating cancer, and I haven't been, you know, I've kind of been not treating it as much as I need to. I haven't been doing that, like, right. hydrogen, uh, two grade hydrogen peroxide. So I thought, well, you know what? My neighbor has oxygen, so I borrowed her his oxygen bottle. I thought, Man, this might make me feel better. <laughs> It'll help with the brain function. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah, yeah. Since yeah. I haven't been really sticking to my cancel protocol, you know, I am. I'm still treating it while I'm, because I just meet out and make juice when I'm <laughs> on the conference call. Just, I don't know, I'm on there in the wee hours. And I'm like, oh, my God, you guys, I don't know if any of y'all ever go back and listen to the conference call. <laughs> there was one night, I don't know who I was waiting for. I can't remember. But I was in the room all by myself, and then I had a freaking fit, and I'm cussing and just throwing a fit. I mean, you know. A very loud fit, and then it dawned on me. Oh fuck! <laughs> mm. All these people are gonna hear my little fit. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna wait for whoever it was to come back. I gotta get to sleep. I was just cracking out. Oh my god, what an idiot! <laughs> oh well, everybody knows themselves got a temper, I guess. Mm. <laughs> but I'm gonna have fun starting these lawsuits with these cops. I've sold them all right to their faces. You know, you're a prick. <laughs> I've said everything I've ever wanted to say to cops. And then I pretended like I liked them at the end. You know, I shook their hands and shit. And it was cheap in my mouth. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I hate cops, man. <laughs> I really do. <clears throat> and they were, uh, I don't know, they're pretty goddamn corrupt around here. But they don't dare do anything uh, to me. You know, everybody's worried about me messing with the cops. They're afraid of me, man. I got these cops on the run. You know, they're just prick. It's funny about small towns. Like, uh, I, I lived in a small town in Alabama for a little while. How small? Real small. South this, Alabama. This, this town's and, uh, like 20, 10,000, I guess. Hey, it's probably pretty much comparable. But uh -huh. the uh, amount of police presence in that one town is just out of control. And, it, you're like, uh, there, there's no reason to have that many police officers in one town, but they do. You know, it's like that here, too. It's, I've heard that they send all the idiot cops and shit out in these small towns like this. I don't know. They got, but our town is, man, and there was, I got to find out what's going on. Because one of my sons told me that it wasn't even all over Facebook. There's so many cops around here today. 
So I don't, I don't know if it's a drug bust happening. It was. I don't. It ain't no drug bust though. Kind of thing. It can't be because I when I left one end of town where I was on the speaker, there was a cop in the parking lot across the street that had somebody, and then I went back through the west end of town, and there was two cops on both sides of the road. So there's four cars that I could see cop cars that had people pull over. So it can't be just a drug bust because they're you know messing with everybody in town, and they're and quite a few of them are apparently following me around. <laughs> Dirty sons of bitches. And every time I see a cop, I get out there on that speaker and start telling people how corrupt our cops are. And I'm going to sue them because I've called 911. I don't know if you were in here and heard all that when I was filling in about my 911 call. Did you hear any of that? Were you here? Uh, no. No, I didn't. Well, I've had to call 911 three different times. And I have gotten, well, one guy was in Pal Butte. It's probably, it's just this little, not even a town. It's just like a store and a school. And, uh, because here I was getting hacked so, so bad, you know, I was, yeah, I was afraid. Because, you know, I'm a walking target with all the shit I'm doing and what's on my truck. <laughs> and anyway, this guy didn't want to come from Pal Butte in Triangle, which is, um, oh, shit, it's a 10-minute drive. He goes, you expect me to drive all the way into Triangle to wake up your son? Uh, I said, you know what? I said, just fucking never mind, and I hung up on him. <clears throat> I've hung up on a couple of cops here lately. And there were two other times that I wanted to help downtown because I thought that we were safe again. And I had told my son, you know, that just lay low for, you know, whatever, however many hours and 24 hours and then we'd be cool. Well, then things changed and the hacking was ant. So I had to get through to my boys that, you know, you need to lay low real low because I'm still getting hacked. So we're not safe yet. And uh, anyway, it was a 911 call. I was afraid for my life and my boys and these cops. I mean, I'll tell you what, they, they brought the... One, they sent an EMT unit to this little store I was at. I'm like, really? Are you kidding me? You guys sent an ambulance down here? I don't need a fucking ambulance. I said I didn't use somebody's fucking phone. They wouldn't let me use the phone. They said, um, oh my god, they arguing with me, arguing, and they knew I was in fear of my life and my kids. And they drew a drug out for like a freaking hour at least. I'm like, really? Are you serious? I mean, I finally just said, fuck you guys, man. I'll go wake them up myself. I need fucking help. They wouldn't escort me home because I had found out in the meantime my son wasn't home. He was actually on his way out to my house, which is eight miles out of town. And I'm a tired son of a bitch, man. I've been putting some hours on this, you know, and with my cancer and everything. So anyway, because of the cops being prick, I was up for over 36 hours. They know I'm sick. They know everything that, I, you know, about me. And I, oh, I fucking pissed. I'm going to tear this part up, this town up, man. I, they fucked with the wrong woman, you know, big old can of whoop ass. They're probably just sitting back thinking, oh, she's got cancer. She's not going to do anything. But I think they're pretty fucking nervous, you know, and they should be. <laughs> Shake up the small town. You bet you, small town, I got a big mouth. <laughs> 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 they say, I guess there's another estimated, like, 10,000 people, you know, in the surrounding area here. But the town itself is like 10,000. I like small town. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Oscar, oh, excuse me. Oh. After today, I've got the ranchers right across from me. Uh, they spread enough word, you know, to the ranchers so that I'll have backup out here. So they'll they'll be watching me, you know, make sure they're safe. But I'm not afraid of my life or nothing. Just it's, I mean, it's, it's just why I was being hacked so bad, you know. Is your uh, Wi-Fi protected with password? Mm-mm. Huh? Do, say that again. I think I misunderstood you. Is your Wi-Fi in your home protected with a password? Yeah. Okay. It is. But they have, I mean, I wish you guys could see what's on my computer screen, the crazy stuff that's been happening, you know, since uh, this all started. I got to the point where I couldn't even load, well, it takes me about 10 times to even, you know, get my password to, to load Windows. And it takes me, yeah, 10 times or so. Sometimes I have to try and, and uh, the other day, I can't remember, I think it was about three days ago, I was looking for, uh, no, about four, because I was looking for a, a, a Trojan cleaner, or had been before they uh, they really screwed my computer up so bad I couldn't even get on in or nothing. Anyways, I was looking for, uh, oh, who was that? Uh, I can't remember if it was Louisiana, or anyway, it's somebody we were talking about, it, and he was walking me through, you know, to, to get the Trojan cleaners and shit, because I didn't know nothing about it. And Okay, now bear in mind, I, Windows had not even finished loading. I was not on the internet, didn't even have a browser up, but the page that CNET, where I was going to go get the uh, Trojan cleaner, was that the CNET's uh, page was up on my screen, and I had not had it open the last time I, you know, had looted my system or anything, but I had started to download the Trojan cleaner, and whoever's hacking me wouldn't let me download it. It pissed me off. Like, wow, these guys are pretty smart. They got some powerful knowledge when it comes to this hacking shit. I don't learn it. Did anybody have a chance? Probably not. Nobody had a chance to look up that Scott Mayor, uh, what, uh, what I said, uh, Sherry uh, Scott Hall? No, uh, 
Uh, uh, one more question. <laughs> since that heartbleed, since that heartbleed uh, virus came out, have you changed your passwords? It won't let me. I can't change my password anywhere. The hackers got me blocked for that too, because the first thing I was going to do is change my Facebook password and then go change all my other passwords, but it won't let me. I couldn't even change it. Uh, my phone, I think I tried, and yeah, I, they, 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 they're hacking me bad. I've never seen this shit before. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I think I'm going to have that uh, uh, Department of the Interior guy come out here so I can show him all this weird shit and explain it to him, you know? I mean, hell, he's a college educa educated and a paid government hacker. You ought to be able to give me some information on this half of shit. <sighs> Let's see, I can look her up. Let's see if I can bring up her page or anything. Sherry with a Y, isn't that what I said? And there she is, right there. Got a freaky looking picture on her, <clears throat> as her icon, too. I think it's her daughter. Freaky looking. Type her name in there, in the, uh, up there, to search for her. See what you think about that picture. It's just a crazy little looking thing. Or are you by a computer? Oh, uh, you know, I'm driving. Oh, oh, that's right. You were driving. I forgot. <laughs> oh, it's one of them little, uh, rat dogs with long hair, uh, with a real smashed in face, but long hair. I don't know what the hell that is. Oh. It's kind of scary looking in the picture. And I love dogs. See, I, I just don't know who this is, and I'm not seeing a lot of... See, I don't see any Bundy Ranch shit on her page. Let me see. Well, she might... Well, I don't know. That's kind of a, she's uh, friends with uh, the veteran site. Michelle. Friends with Recon. Oh, she is? Okay, she's, she's friends with Recon America. Okay. Somebody's, Somebody's calling, calling you, Michelle. Me? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, is remember? Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte, oh, hi. Is my voice getting hoarse? What do you think? <laughs> Hey, you, that woman that you're talking about, that Sherry, she was one yeah. of the first. She was one of the first originals that was on this conference call with all of us. Oh, okay, then, okay. She, she runs a um a rescue for Pekingese dogs. Well, that's what that dog is. Okay, okay, good. I wasn't yeah. sure who she was. Also, yeah, I don't she, see any Bundy Ranch stuff on her page, Charlotte. There's not. I don't see any. There's patriotic stuff, but I don't see any posts from the Bundy Ranch. What the hell? I have to look on her profile. Pardon me. I said I haven't really actually like looked on her profile. I'm looking on her page now, yeah. and I I don't see anything Bundy Ranch. Quite uh, hmm, interesting. I guess she didn't have hardly any. But she must be what really busy, or I don't know. She was on. I don't either. She, she was on every day for a while, and then she hasn't been on for a, a while. So I don't know. Oh, I can't look at her friends because I haven't accepted her friends' request. So it's cool to go ahead and and re accept her request, or or she's I got her on everything. Okay. She's on mine, I think she's on um, Dixie's. Okay, all right. If she's the real deal, as long as I got, you know, verification from you guys, I'm good with it. Uh, I think yeah. I just sent her a message and said that I had to verify it first, I think. I was, wasn't was nasty or nothing. <clears throat> uh, how about uh, this one, Charlotte? Uh, it's Debbie. Debbie with an I. The last name is B as in boy, U-S-K-I-R-K. Oh no, that you reckon they that name? Okay, that may be. Well, I've recruited quite a few people out here too, so I just told them all to you know leave a message or something that you're uh, met me here in Primeville or whatever you know, because I told them all that I'm being real careful about who I friend on here. Okay, I'll go ahead and confirm hers. I know I don't friend everybody. Uh oh, -uh, I check them out first, man. If they're not, if they don't have friends of you know Bunny Ranch or any or you know any of the Bunny Ranch stuff, I I just don't. So friends of. Somebody earlier was said, uh, how do you know that there's not, like, undercover federal agents that has went out to the Bundy Ranch posing as right. a country, as a militia? Mm -hmm. That's you know, what that, was, uh, that's what that guy told me today. There was some people I'm knocking sorry. that off the account, but let me tell you something. If the FBI can get in inside the mafia mm -hmm. of all, and not be recognized as a federal agent, and bust a mafia family wide open. Right. What do you think you do at the Bundy Ranch? Come on now. Yeah. Yeah, no shit. How have you been in the last few days, honey? I haven't talked to you for a while. Sorry. Well, I went, to, I went to a doctor and I got some surgery coming up in June. Uh -huh. I got to get this out of the way. But other than that, I've been okay. Um, hang on. I got to plug my phone in here for a second. <laughs> I can't only form words tonight. I'm supposed to get tired. Hi, everybody. Come back. Well, hi, Barbie. I think we're due for a commercial break, honey. I just wasn't into it, man. I don't want to do any of this. Okay. Well, just leave it. We don't need it. We're the only ones in here, aren't we? Some, I don't know how many souls are in here. I think there's like nine or ten of us. There's how many? What? Whose phone's there's making noise? That, Debbie, that Debbie person's last name was? Oh, what do you mean, spelling? Huh? Oh, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Uh, B-U-S-K-I-R-K. 
No. I was looking to see if they was on my Facebook, but they're not. Um, mm-hmm. Child? Yes, ma'am. Is that not Miss Debbie that you talked to on here from Michigan? Uh, maybe I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna go check her shit out. Ah, uh, thank you, yes, honey. Remember you told her to send you a friend request. She's the really she yeah. lost her daughter. Oh, is that who this is? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cool. I liked her. Yeah, we'll get along real well, huh? I think so. Yeah, I do too. I just oh my gosh, when I was hearing her story, I was like, oh, oh my heart, oh my god. Yeah, but she won here. So who else do we have on the line? Can everybody say hi so I know? Well, this is a uh, good night. Uh, I was on here all night listening to y'all. Didn't get a chance to talk, but uh, I'll catch you all tomorrow night. Miss uh, you one. We'll see you tomorrow night. All right. Have a good one. Stay safe, man. All with you, man. This is Florida mm-hmm. One. I'm here. Is November 28th on? I don't know. He said he'd be right back. What did he do? Fall asleep? Oh, my beer's not warm, not cold anymore. Holy shit, I can't even drink right. He might have fell asleep because he works all day. He didn't get off work till like 3.30 tonight. Oh, was he pretty tired today? Shit, I've been Probably. Who, who, who isn't tired, man? We're all sleep deprived, I think. <laughs> shit, it's not me. No? Uh-uh. Well, I'll that's right. I've had, I got, I got 20 hours good. of sleep. And oh, you guys, I slept for nine hours um last night. This morning. No, eight hours. Nine. Well, I said it was a long time anyway. Shit, I don't get nine hours in a week. Oh, honey, I haven't had that much solid sleep since they put my power port in for my, uh, <laughs> knocked me out, put my power port in for my cancer crap. Ugh, so tired. Uh, I'll be melting tonight <clears throat> whenever I get to bed. Well, why don't you go get to bed so that you can get some rest so I don't have to worry about you. Oh, I'm not ready yet. I don't know. I have these little, I don't know, some kind of a spirit guide shit going on. I don't know. That's just telling me to chill, relax, you know, watch TV, listen to conference call, do this, do that. She's, I call it a she, but she won't, doesn't want me to go to bed yet, I guess. I don't know. Okay, but are you going to be able to be awake when I'm at the doctor? Be awake when? While I'm at the doctor's. When, when are you going to the doctor? I have it. Six, six, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In five hours. Uh, I'll probably be asleep then. Yeah, what time is it? I guess I could look. Oh, I don't have my glasses on. Oh, oh my God, I can't stop yawning. I'll go check her out there to wake you up. I might need somebody out here to wake me up. Oh, he's probably too young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> uh, what time is it? Uh, oh, my God. Oh, shit. It's almost 3 o'clock. Does anybody have Does anybody have polar assault friended on Facebook? He's boots Who? on the ground. He calls himself polar assault. He's boots on the ground out there. Oh, I don't have him on my phone. Well, anyway, apparently there's a PayPal set up for um. It says to assist here at Bundy Ranch with some of our bills. <laughs> I wonder if that's, ever, I wonder if that's his or, personal household bills. You know. I don't know. It says um. John underscore hack at one at yahoo dot com. If you use PayPal and wish to donate money to assist those of us here at the Bundy Ranch with some of our bills, you can use the email above. If you share the email and it becomes questioned on being legit, they can inbox me and I'll respond with GPS so they are able to verify my location. And he posted that three hours ago. What the hell? I thought I thought the donations were going directly directly to yeah, that's something. The Clive and Carol. No, not all of them are. What did oh, I tell you? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. No, actually, this is part of one. Actually, there is a couple of boots on the ground that left their family and and, and, and are in dire need. Uh, that went up there, and uh, there is a couple of boots on the ground that did set up accounts on their own, just a GoFundMe account to get their friends to basically their friends on their pages or whatever to uh, donate a few dollars. You know, to get them from point A to point B or whatever while they're there. But uh, oh, a lot yeah, of people, many people are probably really broke that had to come all the way from wherever, huh? Well, a lot of them funded themselves, and then they brought their own food, and then they're paying for their own food. But I mean, don't get me wrong, there's stuff that is donated there, food, and the Bundys cook breakfast and lunch. The only thing they have to worry about is dinner. And a lot of the people are bringing in stuff, cooking dinner, big amounts of dinner, and sharing it with everybody. But oh, cool. 
but there is I do know that there is food and stuff needed there. <laughs> Still. Well, he's got another yeah. post in his Facebook and it says uh Bundy Family Care Packages, thirty three fifteen New Gold Butt Road, Bunkerville, Nevada, eight nine two zero zero seven. That's that huge. Yeah. Donation. That's a, a wow. Sock t shirts, foot powder, baby powder, baby wipes, toothbrushes, uh, hard candy, food that won't go bad, granola bars, etc. Please, no homemade food, blanket, quilt, whatever you can imagine you'd use while camping or deployed. Batteries, lights, MRE, first aid, sunscreen, magazines, reading books, powder drink mixes, country time, instant coffee, ranch date. We need 30 to 50 men to man post for guard duty. Now, this was 10 hours ago. We need 30 Can to 50. Can you share the other one on my page, please? And, huh? Can you share the other one over to my page, please? The yeah, pay- the, the PayPal one? Yeah. This- yeah, the, the yeah. 30 to 50 manpower thing is, I heard them talking about that. What they're trying to do is they're trying to build up more people there so that instead of people, instead of them pulling like all night and all day and only getting two hours of sleep apiece, they're trying to do it in shifts where there's like three shifts, you know, and that way, there's still an army of people there, but some is resting while, you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But their game plan is they need another 30 to 50 in order to be efficient in protecting the ranch if there was a standoff. What, they need more boots right around the ground zero? 30 to 50 men to man post for guard duty and rotate shifts. We have mm-hmm. a field kitchen and three meals a day. If homeless vets want to help, we are um, occupying the ranch for three plus months. The watch yeah. poster line number is, and he's got a phone number here. Oh, and it says, okay. if anyone wishing to donate much needed food, water, or medical supplies, send them to uh, Bundy Ranch, Highway I-70, mile marker 112, Bunkerville, da-da-da-da-da. Thank you. And oh, it says, guns and ammo, too. <laughs> Do they, Charlotte, do they need, like, uh, you know, beans and rice um, and stuff like that? Because I have a lot of that. I could send that some down there to the house. Listen, don't repeat the, gun, the ammo part because if you send ammo down there and somebody accidentally shoots somebody else, you can be held liable. Yeah, you can't really send that, that stuff down there. I don't even know why you put that. Oh, God, no. No, no. But I have dried beans and lots of, dry, lots of rice, Barbie. <laughs> you know, I have lots of excess that I can send. Oh, so when I hit the uh, share button, Blaine Cooper come up as him being the original one who wrote this. Can you post that to my page, too? Please, mm-hmm. please. Yeah, but that mm-hmm. came from Blaine Cooper is over top of the whole ordeal. Well, not over top the whole thing, but I think he's in charge of the ordeal. I think they might have shared that from Blaine Cooper's, uh, from the Oak Keeper's website, from, uh, from Blaine Cooper. Mm-hmm. Oh, dang it. Barbie, we, or one of you girls pass on a message. I have not remembered to thank everybody that posted to my daughter. And she is so, I haven't even seen all those posts yet. I haven't have been on here long enough to go back and look, but would you just pass it along to everybody that, you know, help make her feel better that I, uh, I owe you. I mean, thank you. Just, uh, that shit was tearing me up. I hated seeing my daughter suffer like that because she thought I was insane. I guess y'all seen that post I put from my old Facebook friends, didn't you? I think I said fuck up, fuck off at the end or something or fuck you. I was pissed. When I tried to share it, it says, uh, when I tried to share it to you, Barbie, it says, no receipt. You must provide a recipient for your shared item. What the? What's that? <laughs> I don't know. Is that just... is, I clicked on on a friend's timeline and then I put your name in there. Then when I hit share, that's what it says. You must provide a recipient for your shared item. What well, are I did. Is there a different post? You may have to go on his page and see it. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe that post is a couple of days old and they deactivated it. It says 10 hours hey, they, ago. Well, it was that shit. Guy with, what you know? I'm sorry. That sorry. guy with the Yahoo address uh, looking for donations to uh, PayPal. I'm not, I'm not saying he's not legit uh, by saying he's going to send you a GPS coordinates, but just be careful because I, I, you can go on Google Earth, Google Earth and get latitude and longitude coordinates and paste them in your, uh, you know, email. Yes, sir. That's I'm sure. I'm person. sure there's some scumbags out there trying to profit. Also. Oh yeah. Shit. There's always going to be somebody trying to scam. Well, if yeah. if anybody has Blaine Cooper friended, that's where that original post came oh, from. That's- Oh, well, that's yeah, where not, it came from. Okay. Not the PayPal one, oh. but the other one just read. Oh, oh yeah. so I can just go to, his, go to his page and look at Okay, I'll just, I'll just do that, sure, and then you don't have to bar- worry about um sending it to me. me. Yeah, I found it on Blaine Cooper's page. Okay, I'll just send him a request. Himself just 10 hours ago, so it's not old. 
Is that B L A N E or B L I N? B L A I N A I N. A I N. Oops. Well, now well, that I'm looking for somebody by the name of uh, Carolina Carolina Johnson sent it to Blaine, so that must not be originally Blaine. Oh, so Blaine's a young on. guy. I pictured him as older by his voice. <clears throat> Unable to send a friend request. So what? Oh, oh, he's reached the friend. He's reached the friend limit. So, what does that mean? Does that mean he has to get rid of something, or no? You just follow him. Go to his page and hit follow. Oh, okay, okay. I'm on his. Yeah, I'm on his page right now. Okay. What did they do? Did they limit the amount of friends you can have, and then you have to follow after that? Is that how that works? They limit the amount you can add daily because they want to make sure you're human, and not a bot and a troll. Hmm. <laughs> she, oh, you know, I Facebook needs to back off of us people, you know, they're messing with all of us. Well, I don't even see it posted on this Carolina person, because apparently that's originally where it came from, and I don't even see it on hers. Not unless what it's was that? Drink. What was, uh, uh, um, what's it say on it so I know what to look for, Sean? Huh? That post on his page, it's still there, right? Yeah, it's on Blaine's, and then it says that somebody, some woman named Caroline shared it to Blaine's Facebook. Mm, I'm not finding it here. Oh, it's going to take more time later. i got to catch up on all my stuff. Should I look at anybody's pages? Or, ugh. Oh, past posts. Ooh. Yeah. I'm friends with, on here, with an ex-boyfriend's son. He's a real cool kid. I kind of adopted him, too. And he had seen one of my posts. I, thought was, I think it was when I was ranting and raving, telling all my old Facebook friends they could fuck off and blah, blah, blah. He wanted to know what was going on. <clears throat> I kind of filled him a little bit, filled him in a little bit, and I thought that like, where his brother lives today and filled him in because, you know, we're all cop haters, gun toting redneck cop haters, <laughs> terrorists, you know. Anyway, I thought that was pretty funny. It was, actually. Those cops were just, I mean, you know, they're doing everything they can to me, you know, to harass me without going over that line, you know. I'm not sure how to handle these cops, so I'm going to be finding out here right quick. But so is Brian Blunk or what? Who's on this? Whoever has the answer. Oh, what, what, what'd you say? I, I didn't hear your question. I asked if Brian was going to come back. Brian tonight? No, if mm-hmm. he was going to like start coming on on a regular basis again. Oh, oh, oh. Well, has he just been busy, or what, what's up with him? I've been off here so long, I haven't been up on everything. I have no idea. Mm. <clears throat> I have no idea. It's starting to turn into a soapbox. Yeah. Uh-huh. This is funny. My best friend is uh, Kathy Sampson. We've been friends for like 20 years. <laughs> she, she liked that one post I put up that I'm so fucking pissed. Fuck for, fuck for you licked it off my shoe. <laughs> and then it goes blah, blah, blah. And on. Oh, what did I say? Oh, yeah, so fuck off. I don't let anybody hurt my children. Oh, that's my cat. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was mad because all those friends, that, I said, you know, it could have just taken any one of them could have asked me what was going on, just and Kristen would have been reassured, and, you know, shit, oh dear. I don't, they're not my friends if they can't even, you know, they don't have the brain or, or mental capacity or whatever to figure out that there's something going on with Michelle, but we are not going to ask her about it. You know, we're just friends. Fuck off, you know, friends of mine. Friends of mine would have my back, you know. I have, what I'm, I'm reading right now is a lie. Boy, that hacking has slowed down so much, Charlotte. <clears throat> they, they allowed me back in today. It was so funny because last night, I think I was telling Barbie earlier, I don't, I can't remember if it was on here or phone or whatever, but, uh, I was pretending to text Barbie on a phone that wasn't even, it's the phone that I was gonna switch over to, but because the hackers didn't, I don't know, they did something and my phone didn't activate. Okay, so this is not an active phone, but check this out. Last night, you know, in trying to stay one half, did, if anybody else wants to talk, step in. Tell me to shut the fuck up or mute me or something, whatever. Uh, anyways, um, this phone was not even active, Charlotte. And they were seeing the text that I was pretend texting to Barbie. Because I got to thinking, well, okay, now what would happen if I responded to a text, you know, like we were just talking about gardens and shit like that? Because I know they, you know, obviously they can access this phone that isn't activated. So I was like, yeah, I know, huh? I, like I was answering Barbie and, you know, something about strawberries and this and that. And I thought, oh, I'll try that and I'll see what happens in the morning. And by God, this morning, I got on my computer. Boom, didn't have any problems. Got right into Facebook. So they, that, you know, they saw those. Isn't that crazy? They see text on a phone that's not active. It's just crazy. Yeah, but if you can get text messages on it, it's still, technically, it's still active. Well, right. But they, you know, I was getting shit on 
on uh, the other phone that was active when they had it hacked so bad that I couldn't even make a call, but texts were still coming in because whoever's hacking me, it would be, I would get the same text when Marie had texted me a few days ago because I think she texted me when said she was worried about me and blah, blah, blah. And there was, uh, let's see, she was worried about me and are you okay and blah, blah, something else. Well, those same texts show, kept coming up on that phone from Barbie. So it was like I was getting Barbie's text over and over and over and over again. I got one that said it was from Barbie six different times the other night. It was that nice, those pups that I had to go clear up to my uh, son's house. So it was like I was up for over 36 hours, you know. And I was just stunned and amazed. It's like, okay, my phone's pretty much locked up. But I'm getting all these texts from Barbie that I knew it wasn't Barbie. It was the hackers because I had also gotten one of those all zero numbers again. Let's see, let me check. Oh, I, I had to. Uh, oh, you guys, check this out. I uh, Norton's monthly report came up. Check it out. Sorry. Are your ears up? Up right? Perk up. Uh, Let's see, there's been two two threats detected over here, uh, 41,278 known threats, 100, 112 intrusions blocked, 4,894, uh, or eight, excuse me, eight, get this out here in second, 8,894 known attacks. So that, all those big numbers, sure, is that the hacking? Is, that's got to be it, huh? Because they've been trying to attack me for a while now. I don't know. I tell you, you need to get that charging that, oh. place Honey, I tried. They, I couldn't get into. Oh, oh shit! I bet I can get there now. So much because it was on CNET, and when they were messing with me so bad, they, they, uh, I couldn't even down because I had started to download it, <clears throat> and then the hackers decided, to, I can't do that. <laughs> and that was something else really weird. Sorry, I don't know if I told you that. If we talked talk since then, because I was just booting into Windows, you know, and then the CNET uh, page came up, and I didn't even have a browser open. And, CNET was there, but it wouldn't let me, you know, download it or nothing. That's Trojan Planner. Pretty weird shit. <sighs> I think they'll just don't let me. I felt like a little kid and I got grounded by, by hackers. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't know what ground in it. Shall I fall asleep? What was that? What was that site? See, CNET.com, I think. That right there. Oh, man. Wow. Maybe it's going to let me download that this time. That'd be nice. Ah, crap. Did you see where the Native Americans went to Washington? They set up TPs and everything else. <laughs> no, I haven't. When was that recently? Yeah, they did it over the weekend. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah I'm telling you, how'd they do out there? Oh, I'm not sure. It actually is, looking? um, is, is a, it, the Cowboys and the Indians did it together. They're really? Protest, yeah, they're protesting that Keystone pipeline. Oh, right on. We're, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get united again, you know. That, you know, we've shit on, on, uh, natives for too long now. And I, I tell that to people out here too. I said, you know, we, like, you know, the, the Native Americans, you know, pretty pissed off about us. About, it. now we know how they, or now we know how they felt. Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I said, they, uh, I don't blame them. I said, you know, this, this land wasn't discovered, it was invaded. You know, we owe the, uh, we owe the natives a lot. And people need to start, you know, stop, they need, people need to stop being so fucking prejudiced and, you know, and they need to to um, acknowledge the Native Americans and, and understand them because you know white people are stupid. I'm white too, but goddamn it, they're stupid. They're ignorant. They have no compassion. You know how do you feel about it now, motherfucker? You know you're oh. going through the same thing that that we went through when they you know came over here to the country. So and people never. You know, I don't even think I've ever heard that brought up in conversation. It w amongst white people that you know. Wow, you know that's been pretty rough on the news. So yeah, you'd think. It's full circle. Everything yeah. comes circle. So Absolutely. you know. Well, definitely. we all know we we know about the yeah. Hopi legends. So from the same ones that 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 took it from the Native Americans. So yep. Everything comes full circle. So now oh, the yeah. only way to resolve the whole thing is the Native Americans and everybody else needs to come together and gap back. Absolutely, you know, I agree. There's no sense in hey, it is what it is. You know. Yeah, yeah we need to all be able to right. Yeah, right. Sit down, have a powwow, and discuss how fucked up we think everything is. But people need to start, you know, people well, need to start uh, um, acknowledging the Native Americans and help them out instead and of saying they're just, up. yeah. So, well, I get real sick of hearing about up. white folks complaining about how these reservations are, are dirty and shit. You know what? Yeah, they are. But you know what? Those people have been suppressed for how many freaking years, and they're depressed as a society because of what we did to them. You know, people need to get some compassion. It's, uh, I'm, and I, hey, you know what? I'm on a mission. I can do that, too. Well, I tell you something. I've sat side by side with my ancestors in ceremony, and mm -hmm. I have sat side by side with my other ancestors in church. 
Mm-hmm. And I would much, much rather sit with my ancestors in ceremony versus Absolutely. in church any day. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Because it's you know, more, that, okay. it, it, you're able to feel creator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, people have the misconception of, oh, Native Americans, they have a whole bunch of different gods. They wor- worship the earth and the sun and the moon. and well, the, right. They don't, they get educated. Get you know, educated. I told I told a gal out here today, she's just a sweetheart. She works for a little local store. We like cheap cigarettes and shit there. And, and uh. And her, she, I just love her. She's so sweet. She fell in love with my puppy, I think. We, it's kind of how we bonded. But anyhow, and she's very religious. She's Christian, I suppose. I don't know. And I just said, you know, I, I said, I'm, 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 I'm spiritual. I said, I, I believe, and, and I think this is the best way to, to resolve this issue is these white folks or any folks, any color folks that, you know, if you believe in your God, that's fine. But I said, everybody needs to put down their Bibles, throw them away, do whatever, burn them. I think they should be burnt personally because they cause so much war. But, Use the Bible as a guide. Do unto others and all that crap. Throw the freaking Bible away because this causes war. Look where the Bible came from. These people have been fighting forever. So let's don't call it God. Don't call it Jesus. Just acknowledge a higher power. That way the, the religion won't in, incite wars. You know, there can't be a, a war over you know, if everybody's on the same page. Because, you know, everybody's always bashing, well, all is not real. You know, it's only God. Well, bullshit. There is a higher power. So you can't keep putting labels on it because it keeps people divided. So if you throw away your Bible and just, you know, acknowledge there is a higher power, I think it would really, really, really help. What do you think? I don't think anybody should throw away a Bible or a Quran. Well, or I mean, of- not literally throw it away, but just put it aside. You know what I mean? Well, I don't care. Like I don't care how a person chooses to worship. You know, it all boils or mm-hmm. or what they decide to call Creator, whether it be Creator, God, Allah, whoever, Jehovah. It's all right, the but, same. Yeah. Entity, you know, it's all the same entity. Right. And here's right, the thing: exactly. you what. If people think that the only ones that's going to heaven is the Christians, that's dead wrong. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a little bit of everything there. For the simple fact, there's good and bad in everybody. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter what religion you come from. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter what country you live in. There's good and bad in everybody. Absolutely. Yep. And the creator I know, it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, as long as no. you're not an extremist and those radical ones that believe in killing people. Right, right, right. It's the original Muslim who, who actually follow the original Quran you're going to get in heaven just as fast as the Christian or whoever else. Yeah. Because yeah. it's back to everybody. Yeah. But, you know, if you if you can put your Bibles in the drawer and stop referring to it as, you know, all the names they have, the God and the... Just, just acknowledge a higher power. It's all good, you know. I don't know. I, you know, I, I, she, actually, she's extremely religious, but she liked that. I mean, she really agreed with that idea. And I think it's just the, you know, just got to get everybody into that mental state of it. There is a higher power. That's it. Leave all the other shit out because it just incites war, you know? It really does. It's just horrible crap. It's, you know, it's, it's against our nature to be so mean. I mean, people are so mean these days. You know, we have to get to where, why are y'all mean? And I know why y'all are mean. You know, I've well, got this shit figured out. I've had a spirit guide working with me in a big way since the Bunny Ranch situation started. It's way I mean, beyond, it goes way beyond uh, Christianity. I mean, you oh know. Yeah, it, yeah, it's worldwide it crap. It started in the Middle East, okay? The Middle East Absolutely. has been fighting since the beginning of time, period. Mm-hmm. You know, that's all those people know. Generation Charlie, after generation after generation. That's all they you know. Just said, you just said word for word what I tell people. You're awesome. <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's a generational thing. And if, you, if you're if you born and raised in, in that type of environment, and then you have kids and they're born and raised in that type of environment, and then it goes on down the line, I mean, mm-hmm. how do you see the culture? That well, knows see, that's, that's, that's where I, mean, I kind of get my really, idea from. Sometimes. They're trying to fight from the time they're born. Right. They're born and bred to die in war because it, it, it uh, assures the place in heaven. That's what they believe, yeah. Okay, but so now let me, but look at this. No, I ain't going to, never mind. I'm not going to even open <laughs> that channel. <laughs> All right, I'm on, have you ever been to the CNET? Let me, put uh, it this way. let me put it this way. There's some American people, there's some American <laughs> people who also train their kids to fight. Yes, there is. There's a lot of anger in the world. I don't, I think that goes against not, nature. I don't trust and believe something. If a civil war breaks out, I guarantee mm-hmm. you that a 5, 10, 15 year old is going to be strapped and ready to kill some damn body. So what's the yeah, difference? Yeah, what's the yeah. difference? 
There is none. And, and you know, they, it, it wasn't like that. And here, where the natives were, they weren't weren't fighting in them crazy ass wars in the name of God over there in the in the Middle East. You know. Well, let a civil war break out here and see how many people are going to be fighting in the name of God in this country. Oh hell yeah, we know about that. Well, anyway, Char, sure. have you been to that CNET uh, website where you get the Trojan cleaner by chance? Yeah, I haven't been there for a while. Oh, I'm trying to remember where I went to get that Trojan cleaner, and I'm not seeing it. It's I like shut up for a minute. Downloads. Uh -huh. on that. I didn't see it there. Wait a minute. No, I'll go there. Downloads again. Well, I'm right there. I just clicked on downloads. So I want to make sure it's the right cleaner because the other day, or whenever that was. Okay, did you click on download? See the okay. red bar at the top. A red bar? It, yeah. Go to CNET and it says at the top it says reviews, news, video, well, how to and download. I, yeah, I clicked on I clicked on download, but I'm okay. not seeing the same one. Oh, hang on, I went back. Okay, okay. now see where it says most popular downloads. Uh, uh, on the down you pre after you press the download button, uh, click on download. You mean? Yeah, hold on, I'll find one for you. Well, I went forward and then I had to go back, <laughs> so I, I'm all messed up. Are we the only ones in here? Or I don't know. Voice fall asleep? I guess they did. You know, I get called right. radical. I've gotten called radical all my freaking life, man. And it's because of, of my own personal beliefs. My mom calls me radical. My mom says that I should have been born Jewish just because of <laughs> my beliefs in Jesus Christ. I mean, I believe that Jesus Christ was a prophet. He was a teacher, you know. And that's right. it. Nothing right. more, nothing less. Okay, I clicked on download and, okay, so I'm just download and I don't, oh, search download. Oh, gee, I could just type it in there, huh? That'd be the easiest way. Oh, win, oh Windows. Windows software. I didn't see that before. Oh, okay, my gosh. Search download. Type in um, Trojan, Trojan remover. Trojan, Trojan cleaners or remover, either one, huh? Okay. Ugh, I got to turn all the way around. Ugh, I got to get this computer situation straightened out. That may, this this Trojan issue might be why I can't hook up a keyboard to my laptop. Okay, and there's one that's called Trojan Killer. Okay. Download that. And then once okay, you hang on. Let me, let me get to this first because I'm so fucking tired. I'll just forget everything you're telling me. Uh, okay. You see, I can only type with two fingers. Or, yeah, two fingers because of the way I have this shit set up. Okay, Trojan Cleaner. No, it's not Trojan Cleaner. What the? What? Really? Hmm. Just type in Trojan Killer, okay. and then download Trojan Killer, and then after you download it, you've got to install it, and then run it on the computer. You get better better results with Killer. Well, I'm still being hacked a little bit, I'm sure, so they just backed off, so I may have a problem. Is it Ian or Owen? I, for, or a, 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 I forgot. It don't look right to me when I type it. What, Killer? T -R -O -T, no, T-R-O-G, it's A-N, isn't it? T-R-O-J-A-N. I type it like that. It just doesn't look right to me, but it is. I must be really tired. Oh, hell, when are I tired? You should be here. <laughs> no results. I'm, they're still hacking me. This is no results. Nothing. Okay. <gasps> Could you download it and then send the EXE file to me? Would that work? I don't know how to do all that. I I'm know. not that smart. Oh, okay. Well, okay. you would just download the EXE file and then send it to me like an email. Oh, shit. That dead guy wanted me to check my email, too. Oh, oh, oh. Holy cow, I haven't known like this one time. <laughs> well, let's see here. Probably just not going to let me, let me download any of this crap. God, so frustrating. I just don't know enough about hacking to get, you know, this. I need to be two steps ahead of these, these hackers instead of half a step. <laughs> well, I run a vast and I got a firewall, but. I've never had any problems, really, except for Facebook removing stuff, but can't really yeah, stop that. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I've never had anything like this either. This is all new to me. It sure going to be my pleasure. The thing I know. My head. What? Your phone sounds like when it's wiretapped. I do know that. Well, see, I was telling him about that when you and I were on the phone the other day, or whenever that was. <clears throat> that he was, we were hearing voices and shit, and he's, he's still thinking that I'm, it's not government, so i like to say I'll be glad to take his $5 because I believe I'm right. Huh? I don't think it's government. What, it's attacking me? Yeah. Who the hell do you think it is? I don't know. You may have a hacker on your friends list you need to get rid of or something. I don't know. I think it's the government. I felt that from the very first time, man. When the first time I got that zero, 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 all zeros on a uh, phone call, man, that the hair on the back That's of my neck came up something fierce. That's a telemarketer. No, it, it can also be a hacker, I'm thinking. I'm pretty damn sure. Because that's when my hacking started. It was, well, it blew, you know, it started on the day that the ranch blew up, but, but, uh. Okay, all you gotta do is type in 
zero 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 phone call. Right, right. But it seems okay. to, yeah, he has explained some of that to me. And there's a bunch of people that that, that happens to. Mm-hmm. And logs and stuff on it. <laughs> Well, I, just, I thought it was coincidental because right after those zeros showed up, then I started to have a major issue. You know, I knew somebody was hacking me right after that, you know. And, See, since, and, 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 and plus, since my phone person. is being hacked, I don't know. No, there's one person said they get that number on their phone a lot, and they said it's people people selling everything from a blood glucose meter sales rep to bill collectors to offers to lower interest rates to magazine sales rep. That's hmm. all it is. Well, I guess, it's a telemarketer. I guess, yeah, I guess we'll find out. But I have never had a telemarketer come up all zeros before. I mean, this is I've just never seen that before. Because usually they they come up. Uh, Oh, what the hell do they come up? Look, let me tell you something. If, if if the government was hacking, don't you know that everybody, I mean, if they really wanted to do that, they would hack every single person who has called in on this conference call. And they well, would hack every single person's Facebook and everything uh-huh. else. It's government. You're being paranoid. Do you think so? I, re- I don't know. I just got this strong feeling that it's the government and it won't go away. It's just a real powerful feeling, you know? No, probably somebody probably, you probably got, somebody probably sent a Trojan to your computer and they gained remote access to your computer or something like that. And well, you I know download. there was remote access going on. I can see it. Trojans can do a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm just so curious to see how this all ends up because having, having Clint is my, my friend's name, the, the hacker guy. You know, he's going to help, be able to help me. If, if he has time to come out here and look at my computer, he'll be able to help me with everything. But, um, well, he, we, he's helping anyway. But I just wanted to see because my computer done, has done so many weird freaking things that, you know, it's hard to relay to somebody when you're not in front of the computer because we're just sitting in the been car, you know. Huh? Have you been looking at porno? God, no. No. <laughs> somebody else asked me that, too. I'm like, fuck no. <laughs> I know what happens when guys start looking at porn. <laughs> you could pick up viruses on your computer doing that. That's all you're saying. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. And there was, I remember going to some site and it, it wasn't no porno or nothing. It was just a, I can't remember what the hell I was researching. And I got onto their their page and it was like this bright red, like blood red. Boy, I got the hell out of there. I'm like, oh, that ain't even cool, man. That's, uh, uh-uh, that doesn't look good. <laughs> it scared me. So I backed out right quick. I thought, ooh. I don't know how wow, that happened. Okay. I'm still trying to download. I'm going to keep fiddling around here. Maybe a, I doubt I'm going to be able to get along, but who knows. And see, uh, everybody that, I don't know if I told you that my foster dad hadn't had been on Facebook for three years. And when he, the first time you went into Facebook, you got a virus immediately. And which is happening to everybody that you, that you, uh, uses my phone or, you know, text me or anything. It was like it was affecting their phone if I called. Let's see, if I called, if they called or I could, was allowed to call them more than twice, then their stuff starts having problems. And see, I had talked to my foster dad twice, so apparently that, I'm, I'm thinking that gives the hackers enough time to gather all the information they need, you know, your IP address and all that, and whatever else they take, you know. I don't know. It's just interesting. I'm just learning. I, I wish I knew a good, uh, anonymous hacker, damn it. Well, I guess this guy's probably just about as good, I would think, huh? Okay, there's one that says get the latest features and bug fixes for your software with free download apps. I don't want that. I I just don't think it's going to work. They're not going to let me download anything. Pricks. Okay, any virus, 314. Oh, I'm at most popular. Did you say you saw it in the most popular list, Charlotte? Do I? What did you say? Oh, I said, didn't, didn't you say, did you say you saw it in the most popular uh, downloads on the CNET site? Yeah, yeah, and once you get to the download, up there at the top where it says, um, where it's got that little search bar, uh-huh. then Trojan Killer. Yeah, okay, so I go, which one, go to the top one here on the list, on the most popular list, the Avis Free Antivirus 2014? Okay, see where it says search download. Uh, hang on, let's see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, type in well, there, Trojan Killer. That's where it wouldn't take. That's where I tried it last time, and it wouldn't. It wouldn't let me download it. Okay, scroll down, and it should be one, two, three. The fourth one. It's all. It's really right there already. There should right, be on there. List. Yeah, see the on list. On the antivirus plus. Okay, so it's one, two, three, there. four. Oh, C C cleaner is that the one? No, it says Trojan Killer. See how come that doesn't say yeah. that on mine? Wait, you're on the wrong. You're on the wrong. Wait a minute. Let me back up. I no, I'm on the. Okay. Yeah, you're looking at the one that says C C cleaner. Uh. That's the fourth one. Yeah, yeah. Is that the one or? No. Uh, is wait, is it killer? But see, I don't. You know, where did it go? <laughs> it's not in that list. Hey, honey. 
Hi, girlfriend. What are you doing? I'm wondering what you're doing, chasing everybody away. Oh, we pissed them off. Why'd you do that? Oh, we we got mad, ran them off. <laughs> we got tons of background noises. Can you tell who that is, Barbie? No, because I'm not at the control panel. I'm in bed. Oh, you're in bed? We'll go back to bed. What are you doing on here? I'm making sure you're not running everybody off. Oh, no, we're fine. It's just me and Char. I think everybody else left. No, there's six people in here. Oh, well, they're pretty quiet. We're just trying to find uh, Trojan killers on my computer. Nobody's talking except her and I. Did you give anybody a chance to talk? Well, no, you've met me and Char. Come on, man. Don't be silly. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or comments or concerns while I'm here? You can talk over Michelle, I promise. Yeah, you can just tell me to mute for a minute, then I'm fine. She doesn't fight too hard. Huh. Okay, sure, I didn't hear what you said. Did you find anything in that list there, or should, do I need to go somewhere else? Because on my end, it doesn't show any Trojan killers. It's not. I don't think it's going to let me download anything, Barbie. I already tried, and it, it denied me. So the hackers have slowed down, but apparently it's not going. Damn it. Won't let me do nothing. What is this? What is that, Charlotte? What is that CC cleaner or C cleaner, whatever it's called? That's what I'm looking at. Oh, did we lose Charlotte? Hmm. Ellie, Ellie, come here. Ellie, come here. Is everybody sleeping in here? Hey, this is a high one. Who's here? The conference line told me there's only one other person on the line. Um, if you could let me know who you are. Hold on, we're four. Hey, I'm out on the road. Somebody tell me what's going on down the Red River. Hello. Oh man, we got not a Again, Oklahoma 4, can I get an update on the Red River situation? Oklahoma 4 out. Morning, this is Michigan 10. Hello, hello. Barbie, are you on there? Sorry, I forgot that. Um, I just, we gotta get the information out there that he's not racist and that militias aren't crazy and that militias do good things. And, and only post stuff that's positive. Yeah. How's the mess out now? Well, we're not saying that that's not positive, but we're trying it's to. It's not. If people listen to it in its entirety, it's not racist. No, it's, it's not. It's just saying, it's just saying, it's the last word, is saying the government or freedom, you know? The government is slavery. That's what he's saying. I definitely agree, uh, but I also think the vast m masses of un uninformed people in America will just hear him say the word Negro, and that'll be enough to set them off. They won't even be able to hear anything else he says <laughs> because they're so uninformed, and that, that's what I'm really fearful of. And they won't even they just put their wall up. If racist, not listening to it, you know. And w w I'm all for battling that, but it's a it's a hell of a daunting task. And for and all it means is black. That's all it means. Agreed. It's not like he's, he's saying the N I G G word. If he, was, if he said that, then yes, that would be racist. I agree. I do agree. But like I said, they, there's a lot of people that are offended by just that. You know, you know how how pussyfooting you have to be about political correctness these days and all that. And you know, he's Clive and Bundy. He's not uh, he's not a public speaker, and people do need to realize that he's he's an old time cattle rancher. And uh, you know, but. Uh, like I said, I fully support them. I still support everything it's about. I, mean, I stand behind all the Patriots, and I'm right along with you. But uh, 
I really think he needs to get a PR guy and get somebody in front of him because he's going to get picked apart. You know how these media sharks are. They know just the right questions to back people into a corner and to not let them get their word out the way they need to. And uh, he, yeah, he definitely and, needs some help. And, and Glenn Beck did it to him last week when he interviewed Clive Mundy. And then as soon as Clive Mundy was off the phone, then he started demonizing him. And that was a bunch of crap. And, and, and he was making more or less making Clive and say words that he didn't understand. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I can't remember that word, but it really doesn't matter. I didn't help. see the uh, I didn't see the interview, but you know that's that's standard tactics. You know that's that's does how anybody, quote unquote, news is. Does anybody know what's going on with this fight between Alex Jones and I think it was Glenn Beck? Yeah, Jones calls Glenn Beck a shrill, and because Glenn Beck basically reports stuff that Alex Jones reports three months after Jones does, but then he he gets some supporters, and then he turns them around, and just kind of like he did with Bundy started to say Bundy was a good thing and this and that, and then he completely turned it around to try to get people against him. And uh, that's basically what Alex Jones says about him. I have mixed feelings on either of them, but uh, that, that's that's the general view. But, you know, if it wasn't for Alex Jones and InfoWars, you know, because he, he really blew this open. I mean, nobody knew about it until he, Cliven was on his show. Uh, he, he definitely blows a lot of stuff open. You know, like I said, I do have mixed feelings. There's certain certain aspects of the way he approaches topics and the way he broadcasts information that I don't exactly agree with, but uh, he does do stuff I do like too. Um, and Glenn Beck's even worse. As far as I'm concerned, he's just a uh, propagandist. But um, either way, the information's getting out, and I'm all for that part. And I believe uh, Infowars has had climbing on more than anybody else. I got an idea. I want to run it past you guys. And I know Brian's probably not going to go for this, but um, Brian's not here, so I think we can do it. Why don't we see if we can get a general consensus on which reporters are still for Mr. Bundy? And let's see if we can get either them or one of their representatives to call in. Yeah, that'd be cool to get Shikari Jackson or some, or, or uh, David Knight from uh, InfoWars on. And who was that? This is Real Patriot speaking. Okay. I'm on Skype now. I, I, can, I can tell because it says anonymous. <laughs> um, do you want to try that for me? It'll have, um, it'll have yeah, to I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll go on InfoWars and, uh, on their show tips and I'll, uh, maybe the other guy can do it too. Um, the more people that do it, the better. Um, just go on InfoWars and under show tips, just yeah, see if they can get someone to uh, come on the line. Yeah, tell them, tell them, you know, in the afternoon hours, like from noon to five, you okay. know, you know, it'd be really good if we could get Alex Jones to come on. But I think Brian would fire me. <laughs> Brian doesn't like Alex Jones. I know, me either. <laughs> But, but you know, David Knight and I think it was Kit Daniels from InfoWars, they're the ones that got, they got really good footage of the standoff and, um, you know, they were right there at the gate, at the fence when they were actually talking to that, that piece of shit Green Beret that was, uh, um, worked for the BLM, Daniel P. Love. Well, uh, this Minnesota yeah. Mile. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I just got kicked off. It goes on here too long. I yeah, just want to see what's on here. here. It's four to six hours. Yep. Um, you know who else would be a good one for us to get a hold of? Den- Dennis Michael Leary, or Dennis Michael Lynch. What's his name? Dennis Michael from DML. And, and you know who else has been given good coverage is uh, the Next News Network on YouTube. Minnesota One, this was my idea. You tell me what you think, because I respect your opinion. Uh, let's get some of these reporters that have something good to say about Mr. Bundy to come on and talk. Um, we could try. Um... It's only a phone call. Yeah, well, I don't really have any access to any specifically. There's one reporter I actually still think does honest journalism is uh, Ben Swan, but he's a very busy man. Um, I could try to send him an email or something and see. Um, if he can get some prime time numbers, he'd probably be interested. Otherwise, you know, he's he's got a, all his time is valuable, so to speak, you know. And, and he's done some pretty good stuff already um, about the money rent. He has indeed, especially uh, Harry Reid's terrorist remark. He made a hell of a strong point on that one, and I shared that all over the place. Yeah, I did too. I still like the fact that I got 60 and a half points out of 72. That made me very proud of myself. Anybody else want to chime in on this idea and give me your thoughts? Do you think it would work? Well, we only had five callers when I came back in, by the way, including myself. Well, if it said five, then it would be six. It said four. Oh, okay. So that would be me, you, uh, Patriot. Uh, I don't know if Chris in Washington is still on. I think he said he had to go for a while. Yeah, he's still there. Tim in Virginia, where are you? I don't see you on here. Unless you're the other anonymous. He's being quiet. Richard's on here for Texas. Richard, what do you think of that idea? 
that sounds pretty good to me. I just don't know how many people would actually see it. I wish we could get somebody, one of these reporters to, in the main, in the main, not the mainstream media, but get them in the mainstream to start talking right about it. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't follow the political agenda that we're dealing with. Uh, I don't, personally, myself, I don't think of anything of mainstream media other than government oh. propaganda. It's no, I'm not more talking more. about the mainstream media, the people there. I'm talking about one of these reporters you're talking that you're you're bringing up to have some kind of Do a program uh, right? spot on a yeah a program that would reach the mainstream. Yeah, well, we, I'm sure they're working on it. You know, they, it takes a long time to put together those those nice, well-produced news pieces, and this situation yeah. is so fluid, so much is changing. We can also uh, we can cut the recording off and then start it over and just record the piece, the segment that they're on for, and make it uh, into a YouTube video. Yeah, I know Chuck Smith's done a few of those. I can do it now. Well, look at you, fancy pants. I know, right? I'm just awesome like that. Comes with the name, you know. Do you know how many girls hate Barbies? Probably most of them that are over about 12 or 13 years old. Uh, put it this way. Like I said, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if uh, you're better off. Hey, um, do you need the link for the info or um, interview? Um, could you um, actually post it on the community conference page? Yeah, I'm just watching it to see what it says. Yeah, I just watched it live. Do they already have the uh, recap version up there too? Um, no, someone posted it on the Rand Paul's page, and I just looked at it. Infowars part. Yeah, it says the, this is a live interview, and then it just goes right to the interview. It's about eight minutes long. Nice. Very quick. Yeah. You want me to play it over the phone, or? Uh, I'm okay with it. I already heard it once, but, uh, yeah, I guess yeah, I'll, I'll start it over. Well, and I talking about cotton, that's, that's going to be come back to Yeah, we don't want the whole thing to play. Hi there, Chris. How are you? All right, I'll just copy link then. Michigan 10, checking in. Oh, that's Michigan 10. I should know that. Hi, Michigan 10. I'm back. Thank you for being worried about me this morning. I was, I was. Did you see my link in the conference call? Um, not yet. I didn't. I just got back on and I'm trying to catch up with everything going on. The unedited version of Cliven's statements regarding uh, the ones quoting in the newspapers and whatnot. That way everybody can watch the complete statement and see what it's actually about. Yeah, unfortunately. Even people that watch the complete statement are going to take the words in their head and turn them around and not think about what's saying or the fact that he's, what, 70 years old and grew up in a different age than we have when tolerance wasn't something that people practiced at all. I also sent you the message for the link, Barbie, as well as John, if you're on. I have on my phone and take my wife to a doctor appointment, so I'll be able to check that when I get back to the house. But thank you. You say they're having a discussion on Rand me? Paul's page, right? I'm sorry, say that again. I was just saying, he was saying they're having a big debate on Rand Paul's page right now, correct? Because I'm not seeing any posts on there. Is it because I haven't liked him? Um, no, you should see it even without liking him. Chris, are you there to verify? Just seeing the boring generic stuff that they post. Maybe I'm on the wrong page. Um, go into where it says, um, post by people on the page. That's probably where it's at. Well, I met a few more new people today, so that was that was good. Did you invite them to call in? Oh, excuse me. Did you invite them to call the conference call? No, nope, they called in uh, on their on their own, and I haven't heard the, them speak. And a couple new people, me and the uh, other gentleman that was just speaking, were talking for quite some time, for probably a good half hour anyway. Yes, I'm getting less shy finally. Yay! Good afternoon. Howdy. How are you I'm folks doing? I'm on the Rand Paul page, and I can't select anything to see posts by others or anything like, like that. It's just, I don't have any options on this. Go ahead, new caller. Where are you from? Hi, how you doing? I'm from uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. How are you doing today, Virginia? I'm doing fantastic. I'm getting off of work right now. I'm driving home. So I just wanted to call in to uh, you hear any updates from uh, the Bundy Ranch. I got friends out there and uh, I just saw a video posted by uh, Blaine Cooper where uh, you guys, uh, they sent uh, a couple folks out to Sheriff Gillespie's office and uh, they were turned away. And I want to know when this video was made. Hmm, well, why don't you share that video with us on the community conference page and I will take a look at it and see if I can find a date on it. And if I can, I'll find somebody that 
a lot more technical than me, and yes. they can find it the is, timeline. I, I don't have the community conference page on Facebook. I'm not, I was not aware of that. This is my third time calling here, and I wasn't aware of that. But uh, if, if you're familiar with Wayne Cooper on uh, Facebook, I mean, we're millions of Americans here. Wayne Cooper, he's been out there at the ranch with Mr. Bundy. And, uh, well, it's on his page, and I just saw that on YouTube. I don't know the date of that uh, attempted meeting with uh, Sheriff Lester. Does anybody have that information? Can you I mean, repeat uh, that? If you want, um, I don't know who I'm speaking to. Who's the lady that I'm speaking to? That's Barbie. Oh, uh -huh. Barbie, okay. Yeah, Barbie, you and I are friends. You and I are friends on uh, Facebook. You're friying to me the other day. Uh, well, I pray that you and you, you uh, accepted. I can uh, tag you on that video. Okay, do that. I'll go ahead and tag you on that video. You can share it. I just seen it not, you know, 10 minutes ago, so I started calling. Oh, well, that's what okay. this line is for, for verifying or discrediting uh, false information that's out there and verifying the date so we can keep things accurate, keep people that are listening up to date. Right. Well, I, I figure Blake Cooper is up to date with what's going on. That's one of his last uh, posts that he put up. You know, he's been at the budget wrench that, that certainly doesn't look like it was put up yesterday. So I, I, that seems very recent. Very recent because what the militia, uh, the militia group, when other representatives of the militia at the Bundy Ranch went to Sheriff Gillespie's office and pretty much their intent was to speak with Sheriff Gillespie to uphold his oath of constitution and protect Clavin Bundy and his family so all these people can, can leave. Okay. And it clearly states on the video. I mean, they, they, they clearly state that on the video. A lot of people just want to go back home. I'm not trying to pass rumors or anything. Okay. It's on the video itself. I'll share with Barbie and Barbie can share it with everybody. But, uh, yeah, the, the militia is trying to get Sheriff Gillespie to talk to them, you know, tell them and you uphold your oath to protect climate funds because pretty much the militia are there because of the vacancy left by Sheriff Gillespie with having and getting you know, done I think, the right I think, thing. I think the video you're talking about was done on Friday before the cows came home because um, they went into a protest rally in Gillespie's office. Oh, it was not a protest. It was just like maybe less than 10 people that went to visit him in his office and they were speaking to... Uh, they didn't speak to Sheriff Gillespie, they speak to somebody that, that worked for Sheriff Gillespie in his office. All right, so they were pretty much out of the foyer room of the, the Sheriff's Department's office. And, yeah, they, they, they looked nervous, and they brought out other uh, deputies. Uh, they, you know, they, they, I don't know, you have to look at the video. I'll go ahead and share that with you uh, once we get off of here. Okay, I don't ever get off of here, don't you know that? <laughs> ah, you can't say that. Yeah, she's, a, she's apparently a broadcaster according to the FCC regulations. Yeah. Hey, how are you guys doing? We're doing good. How are you doing? I'm hanging in there. 